It seemed to be an ordinary day, with nothing out of the ordinary. The tram was in chaos. There were a lot of unusual strange objects all around. The situation resembled a movie set. Suddenly a goblin armed with an axe appeared among the people. But this day promised to turn our gambler hero's perception of reality upside down, opening the gates to a real hell. His hands were shaking with terror. He tried in vain to call the police. The goblins began their bloody hunt, ruthlessly killing everyone who came into their sight. Panic-stricken passengers on the tram couldn't take their eyes off this horrific massacre. The gambler felt helpless knowing what was coming next and could not find peace. He realized that no one in this tram would escape death. All of them would soon become victims, lying on the floor, covered in blood, killed by goblins. The goblins, these ruthless killers who do not discriminate between children and adults, have already killed 80% of Seoul's population. The hero is faced with the question, will he be able to survive in the midst of this apocalypse? Unfortunately, Kim Hyuk Jin's talent in the world of players was considered nothing, absolute zero. The attacking goblins were incredibly strong and skilled with their weapons. Seoul, 2028. The weather is beautiful outside, and the majestic buildings cut out against the sky, creating the impression of a fairy tale city. The main character's name was Kim Hyuk Jin. He was 30 years old and for seven years he had been trying unsuccessfully to pass the civil service exams. Ten years ago, when the gates of another world opened in Seoul, terrible events engulfed the city. Only a small group of survivors were able to wake up in a new reality, called Players. Kim also had a dream of becoming a player, but he resigned himself to his lack of talent and focused on preparing for his exams. One young man was watching Kim, discussing him with a friend standing nearby. They were discussing that Kim had once taken a player's aptitude test, collecting 67 talent panels, which was a Korean record. They mentioned that he was nicknamed the dead genius for such an achievement, usually talent panels close by the age of 20, and he was already 30, so you could say that he had already lost his future. Unexpectedly, Kim received a postcard with the results of a repeat test he had taken seven years ago as a last attempt to discover his abilities. He was holding an official document from the government that could determine whether or not he had gambling talent. Passing this test allowed to estimate the total number of talents and their possible discovery, but the result showed only one talent, which for Kim was worse than the complete absence of any ability. He couldn't understand why the head of the Players Association's department had personally come to give him these results. It was the line between dream and reality, and because of this, hopes of becoming a player seemed to him an exorbitant luxury. His room was in the usual mess. He did not expect anything good from the next day, surrounded by mountains of unwashed dishes. On the wall hung a photo of him with his mother, adding a special atmosphere to the room. He sat down at the table, picked up a pencil, and opened a remote lesson on his phone. The topic of the lesson was to discuss the horrific events that occurred at the beginning of the disaster. In the video, the lecturer reported horrifying statistics. Out of 150,000 people affected by the disaster, only 5,000 survived. With each passing minute, Kim became more and more fascinated by this man's story. This man, who appeared in the video, played a key role at the beginning of the disaster 10 years ago. Now he is a world-famous player. Whether it was 10 years ago or now, everyone agrees on one thing. This man is living proof that dreams can come true. The words of this man in the classroom, which Kim heard while watching the video, deeply impressed him and made him think. Thoughts of his own lack of strength plagued him, but he tried to fight them. He realized that if he had the talent, he could have awakened as a player, received an offer from the Guardian, and made his life worthwhile. However, the thought arose that he was to blame for his failures. From the envelope, he pulled out a letter from his mother. This letter was written long ago when she was still alive, but only now Kim dared to read it. The letter from his mother revealed their tragic story. She died of an illness, leaving him to cope with grief and poverty alone. His older sister, trying to escape poverty, got a job at a semiconductor factory, but only got leukemia due to the hazardous working conditions, and now she spent time in the hospital under drips. Spurred on by these events, Kim set out to succeed for his family, despite his lack of resources, connections, money, and talent. Having already failed the exam three times, he felt discouraged, but he did not lose hope. Every night when he went to bed, he dreamed about his goals, intending to put all his efforts into achieving them. Time went on, and his dreams echoed with thoughts about the future, whether he would be able to change his life. He wondered if he would ever be able to make his life better, even through his dreams, looking for answers. 
Loneliness weighed heavily on him, and although it was already dawn and almost 6 a.m., he felt extremely lonely. Although he had gone to bed early, he slept through the important day when his midterm was due. Determined not to give up, he quickly took a shower and headed to the academy, determined to turn his life around. He hugs his phone uncomfortably as he sits at the bus stop and shares the news with his mother. The bus is late, but he does not lose hope. A promise appears on the faintly lit bus schedule. The bus should arrive soon, raising a little hope. The environment around him exudes mystery, making this day especially unusual in his eyes, as if hiding something indescribably mystical. When the bus finally appears, he climbs on board, feeling an indefinable difference between this morning and all the others, which raises many questions for him. As he begins to board, he mindlessly leans his phone against the special device, paying for his fare, immersing himself in his usual activities. Despite the outwardly ordinary morning and the cloudy weather that the forecasts promised, the people around him, deep in their phone conversations, did not seem too concerned. He opened his notebook in front of him, having just settled into his seat, to review and dive deeper into the material from yesterday's lesson. The lesson was about the cataclysm that began ten years ago and its consequences for the world, which continues to preoccupy his thoughts. He was most fascinated by the detail of how, with the onset of the initial fog, a new era of learning began, opening up unexplored possibilities. His curiosity is fueled by today's strange weather, which reminds him of those mystical circumstances when everything important began. The tram passengers simultaneously turned their eyes to the window, concerned by the sight of the unusually thick fog that suddenly appeared outside. No weather forecast had ever predicted this. The fog was thickening rapidly, promising unpredictable consequences. Suddenly, an unpleasant smell, similar to a sewer, penetrated inside, forcing him to try to cover his nose to avoid the stench. The situation seemed strange to him not only because of the smell. When he received a message on his phone, he was shocked by the content. A reminder of the thick fog in the city of Seoul on February 27, 2018, which could lead to accidents. Reading this alert, he could hardly believe in the reality of what was happening. Everything indicated that the disaster had started again, repeating the events of the past. It turned out that the entire area, including Guanghuamun, was covered in fog and a foul odor, evidence of something dangerous. There were already 145 victims on the streets out of a possible 150, making the situation even more tragic. He realized that he had gone back in time and knew what was going to happen next, which gave him confidence in his next steps. An instruction on the scoreboard appeared above his head. The players needed to start training. Ten years ago, Cheono Sul became the scene of an unprecedented phenomenon known as the First Drill, when monsters emerged from the dungeon. The unexpected eruption of monsters from the dungeon led to a bloody massacre in which humanity was forced to fight for survival. This week-long cataclysm, later called the Exodus, claimed the lives of nearly 150,000 people in the Juno area, becoming one of the most tragic events in history. The chances of survival were only 3%. It was one of the most difficult days in human history, a test that the entire civilization was facing. However, over time, players emerged. Special people who were able to effectively confront the monsters, making a significant contribution to the fight against the disaster that befell Chano. They created detailed location guides and recorded their battles, which allowed them to develop a virtual dungeon to practice battle strategies. The world began to recover from the cataclysm, and the protagonist became the author of numerous records of raids and went through the virtual dungeon hundreds of times, gaining invaluable experience. Only a few could match him in understanding that event as he had every chance to become the best player in the world thanks to his experience and knowledge. The training was about to start again, and the players needed to get ready. Our hero still could not believe that he was in the past. Panic reigned in the minibus. People, not understanding what was happening, were losing control of themselves, anticipating new challenges. Sitting in the minibus, he maintained an outwardly calm demeanor, but he was panicking inside. He realized that the other passengers, unaware of the cataclysm, did not feel the same fear, which made him the only player among them. Suddenly, his thoughts were interrupted by a mysterious voice. An unknown observer has taken an interest in you. This made him tense. These beings watching the players decide the fates by distributing bonuses and privileges. They exist in a dimension that is one level higher, inaccessible to ordinary people. The player was granted a unique bonus called Eyes of a Cold-Blooded Observer, which significantly increased his chances of survival. The training quest will begin in 10 seconds, the announcement reads. The bus driver, having stopped the bus because of the thick fog, apologized to the passengers and asked them to continue on their own. When the countdown reached 5 seconds, the player urged everyone not to get off, but to quickly lie down on the floor. 
At the second second of the countdown, the passengers froze in fright, standing in the aisle of the minibus, not knowing what to do next. Suddenly, a portal opened right in the middle of the bus and the figure of a woman with snow-white hair began to appear. It was a mid-level administrator known as Ksenia, and her startling appearance shocked everyone present. Ksenia introduced herself to the passengers, informing them about the beginning of the training and that they are now part of this unknown world. A blue card appears in front of the player, informing them that they cannot leave the training zone, and the number of survivors will determine the future difficulty of the tasks. The passengers, bewildered and disbelieving in the reality of the events, perceived the situation as a joke. Standing in front of Kienia, they demanded explanations, hoping for an easy solution. Ksenia firmly informed them that the only task during the training was to use all possible strength to survive. The atmosphere of tension reached its peak when a man, covered in blood, crashed into the windshield of the bus with a fatal head injury. The player, maintaining his outward calm, silently watched the events unfold, analyzing the situation. Soon an army of goblins arrived at the scene, ready to attack. The first groups of goblins were already preparing to storm the Chano district. Some of the goblins had already settled on the roof of the bus, causing panic among the passengers, who barely realized the scale of the threat. The player realized that an outside massacre was inevitable. The main thing now was to find a shelter and put off thinking about the chances of survival for later. A direct battle with goblins without preparation and strategy is a real death sentence that could have been avoided only thanks to the experience of the last ten years. Sitting on the seat, the player continued to look for the best solution that would help him and the other passengers survive in this chaos. The goblins, armed to the teeth and with sharp fangs, were on the verge of breaking through to the middle of the bus, ready to attack. One of them, using a hammer, smashed the glass of the bus door, causing the barrier between humans and monsters to instantly break down. The people closest to the door felt the most fear, and panic quickly spread throughout the bus. The player, Kim, tried to calm everyone down, urging them to lie down on the floor, but his voice was lost among the screams and chaos that engulfed the passengers. At this critical moment, a status window opened in front of Kim, showing his low strength and level 1. A sudden loud sound from the side distracted Kim from watching his stats, causing him to look around. He saw that the goblins were already breaking in, breaking through the bus's defenses and launching their brutal attack. The passengers, terrified, screamed and begged for help, trying to escape the bloodthirsty creatures. The goblins were relentless, killing everyone who came within their reach, indiscriminately, sparing no one. These creatures were absolutely ruthless, with one single mission, to leave no one alive who got in their way. Kim seemed to be lying lifeless on the floor, successfully faking death, while one of the goblins came over to make sure he was dead. The goblin, deciding that Kim was dead, lost interest in him and walked away, giving the player the opportunity to go unnoticed. When the goblin turned away, Kim cautiously opened his eyes, realizing that his strategy had worked thanks to the eye of the cold-blooded observer which allowed him to temporarily turn into a dead man. He reminded himself that in the exercise there are conditionally safe zones, one of which was on this particular bus, designated as the Green Circle. In order to maintain the safety status of this zone, it was important to remain motionless, so Kim did not make any unnecessary movements while lying on the floor. Despite the fear and tension, he remained calm, realizing that any rash movement could deprive him of this protection. The eye of the cold-blooded observer bonus he received in the open beta functioned as an invisible shield that protected him from threats. Although Kim didn't know all the details of his new ability while lying on the floor, he realized that it gave him a chance to survive. He expected the first wave of the goblin's attack to last about ten minutes, according to the knowledge he had gained from the future. For the first five minutes, the goblins actively searched for victims, breaking into the bus and starting their destructive raid. One of the goblins approached Kim, who was lying motionless on the floor, with distrust. The creature timidly touched his cheek with its wet and cold tongue, trying to determine if there was still life in him. Only when the goblin retreated did Kim receive an unexpected message. The brave Lion King is sending a strength-enhancing elixir. He carefully pulled out a small glass bottle with a mysterious green liquid from his pocket. The elixir from the Brave Lion King was a rarity that granted the user an incredible strength boost for 10 minutes, increasing their strength by as much as 6 points. Holding the second bonus in front of him, Kim looked at it with interest, pondering the possibilities. By drinking the elixir, Kim could gain an additional 2 characteristic points for each level increase. Drinking this elixir promised an effect equivalent to 3 levels of strength increase, which could turn him into a real warrior. At that moment, Kim faced a real prospect of changing the situation in his favor. 
Determination flared in his eyes, because now he realized that with his new strength he had every chance of defeating the goblins in a fair fight. An inner voice, like a guardian's advice, whispered to him that he should fight. Kim looked up at the goblins lurking nearby with a new sense of determination. He had a choice. Attack the goblins, risking everything, or wait and hope for the best. There were only a few seconds left before fate would decide everything for him. At that time, the brave Lion King decided to personally communicate with Kim, inviting him to a conversation with the game administrator, which promised a new turn of events. The administrator suddenly appeared in front of Kim, a girl with gentle wings, who handed him a direct request from the brave Lion King, expressed in a soft but resolute voice. Among all the guardians of the virtual world, the brave Lion King was famous for his ruthless bravery and indefatigable fighting spirit, often forcing players to throw themselves into the arms of danger without any regard for the consequences. But the administrator announced that the deal with the Lion King had already been made. The current safe zone would be marked and closed in 30 seconds, leaving little time for reflection. Kim quickly realized that, given his rebellious nature, the brave Lion King could cancel the safe zone at any time, putting his life at risk. If the guard changes the rules of the game, shouldn't the players be compensated accordingly? He asked, trying to find a loophole in the situation. Kim began to argue his position, noting that the administrator could not ignore the existing rules, especially when players' lives were at stake. The administrator was obviously surprised by Kim's persistence and knowledge of the rules of the game. Without losing his resolve, Kim continued to insist on following the laws that were established in this world. Her surprise grew because the last time someone had referred to the laws of the game had been so long ago that almost everyone had forgotten about their existence. Now Kim stood in front of the administrator, tensely awaiting her response, ready for any development. Not receiving an immediate answer, Kim pointed decisively at the administrator, emphasizing that their conversation had cost him precious ten seconds, and demanded that this time should also be compensated. With an unexpected warmth in her voice, she said his name, catching his attention. You're right, she said, agreeing with him. According to the laws of the game, the safe zone would remain active for another 10 seconds after their conversation ended. As a bonus, Kim received a bottle of high-quality weapon sharpening grease and a rusty iron sword, which, although not very strong, only 2 and 5 points, could be useful in difficult circumstances. Kim decided to take everything he could, because any weapon could come in handy now. The portal through which the administrator had appeared began to close. The goblins' first attack was over, and they scattered in a hurry, leaving the bus. As they fled, the goblins left only chaos and destruction behind. The conversation with the receptionist gave Kim valuable time to survive, allowing him to avoid a collision with the goblin crowd and, as a result, survive. Soon after, a blue notification appeared in front of him, stating that the brave Lion King was deeply disappointed at the lack of a battle. There were many victims left on the bus who had not withstood the goblin invasion reminding him of the cruelty and trials that this attack had brought. At this critical moment, Kim focused all his thoughts on one goal, to survive. He gathered his courage, preparing for the inevitable trials that lay ahead. He quickly approached the bus door, but it wouldn't budge. The lock seemed to be blocked or broken. With a lot of effort, Kim managed to open the door, overcoming the resistance of the broken lock. A real test of survival awaited him. He remembered that there was a grocery store nearby where he could find food and water as his three years of training had taught him the area well. The street was in chaos. Kim ran past scattered cars and debris, and the fog made it difficult to see. The bus was the only landmark in this chaos. It kept running, stopping from time to time to rest, leaning on parked cars. Despite being surrounded by dead bodies, Kim felt strangely calm. Perhaps it was the effect of his eye of the cold-blooded observer skill. Suddenly, a small hand came out from under the car next to his leg. Kim flinched in surprise. He cautiously bent down to get a better look at who was hiding there. His heart was beating faster with excitement. A child, about 13 or 14 years old, crawled out from under the car, with frightened eyes begging for help. Please save me, she whispered, holding out her trembling hands to Kim. Observing the situation, Kim could not believe his eyes. Not only was he looking at a child who had survived the disaster, but also at a goblin that seemed to have disappeared after the first attack. This caused some chaos in his understanding of the rules of the game. The goblin, which appeared as if from nowhere, held a knife at the girl's leg, threatening her. This situation was unpredictable and required immediate action. The girl, with tears in her eyes, begged for help, looking Kim straight in the eye. Her gaze was full of fear and despair. Kim, standing over her, listened to her pleas. He hesitated, assessing the situation and the possible risks. 
he wondered why the girl was not yet injured, despite the presence of the goblin. This could indicate that she had some special bonus or ability. Her screams of fear that resounded in the air indicated deep fear, not physical pain. Perhaps she was also a participant in this chaotic world with her own unique abilities. At that moment, the administrator angel appeared in front of Kim again, warning that even if this goblin was only a child of its kind, it would not be easy to defeat it at the initial level. She also hinted that a talent like the girl's was rare, and even the king of fists would be jealous of such an ability at the initial stage. Recognizing the urgency of the situation, Kim realized that if he did not take immediate action, other goblins might soon arrive, which would undoubtedly lead to tragedy. Realizing that there is little time to think, Kim has to make a decision. Act immediately to protect the girl or find another way to resolve this threatening situation. At the crucial moment, Kim quickly opened his inventory to find the rusty sword, weapon grease, and power-up elixir he had been given earlier. Swinging the rusty sword, he aimed his strike at the goblin's vulnerable point right in the neck from behind to deliver a fatal blow without taking any unnecessary risks. The blow was precise and deadly, and the goblin fell lifeless to the ground, a testament to Kim's difficult choice to protect life at all costs. The girl who watched the battle was shocked and touched by Kim's determination. For defeating the goblin, Kim gained experience that could help him in further trials of this dangerous world. As he returned to the girl, he saw that his shirt was stained with the blood of the enemy which only emphasized the cruelty of their situation. He ordered the girl to stand up, not wanting to leave her in danger without protection. Warning her that he could not wait too long, he encouraged her to move with him, emphasizing the importance of working together for survival. Motivated and with a sense of urgency, the girl quickly got up, promising to follow him. Moving forward, Kim led the way to a safer place, and the girl followed, feeling not only a protector, but also a reliable ally in this uncertain world. Upon reaching the supermarket, Kim cautiously stopped in front of the entrance and strictly warned the girl that it was dangerous to open the door under any circumstances. His gaze was full of seriousness. The look on the girl's face expressed absolute horror and fear that gripped her completely. Kim realized that in such a situation, fear is a completely natural reaction. She could barely contain the trembling in her body, feeling indescribable fear of the unknown that awaited them. Suddenly, in the middle of their conversation, a blue alert window appeared, warning them of the approaching second wave of goblin attacks, causing them to freeze. Kim asked the girl to carefully read the information on the window. She did as he asked, and he realized that he was right. She really had an unusual talent. Usually, information about setting up a safe zone was only available before the second attack, and this place was supposed to be their refuge. But Kim had heard that players with unique abilities could see alternative safe zones, such as a hospital. Later, a new message appeared even more mysterious, announcing the opening of an additional safe zone. A second wave of goblin attacks began, raising the tension in the air. Kim once again urgently warned the girl about the importance of not opening the door during the attack, emphasizing the seriousness of the situation. The last message about the completion of the safe zone setup sounded like a sign that they could finally breathe a sigh of relief, at least for a short time. Behind the closed doors of the supermarket, through the glass, Kim watched the goblins wandering down the street, shrouded in the primeval fog. The scene outside the window resembled a picture of the apocalypse. People unable to reach safe zones were in a state of desperate defense. Their attempts to survive seemed futile in the face of ruthless creatures that left no chance of survival. A small group of survivors noticed the light in the supermarket and rushed to the door, knocking and begging for shelter. But their requests sounded like a sentence in this desperate situation. Every minute more and more people gathered at the door, which only increased the risk of attracting the goblin's attention. Inside, behind the door, Kim and the girl stood breathless, feeling the weight of responsibility for their decision. Kim had a sword in his hand, ready to fight the goblins if any of them tried to get inside. Watching the scene from the outside was incredibly painful. People begging for help were falling one by one at the hands of the goblins, who were inexorably approaching. Realizing that opening the door would destroy the safe zone and lead to the deaths of everyone inside, Kim made the agonizing decision not to let anyone in, keeping at least some hope of survival. Despair and powerlessness enveloped them both, especially the girl, whose trembling grew stronger in the face of the horrors unfolding before them. These events will forever leave a deep mark on Kim's memory, becoming a test that will determine his future path in this world of trials and struggle for survival. Standing outside the supermarket, Witnessing the apocalyptic chaos in the streets, Kim felt deeply resentful of the system that threw them into this cruel world and the guards who stood idly by. A vow of revenge was born in Kim's heart against those responsible for this disaster. 
he promised himself that he would do everything possible to make those behind the chaos pay. For six hours after the second goblin attack, the situation on the streets did not change. Chaos and destruction continued to reign everywhere. All these hours, Kim and the girl remained in relative safety inside the supermarket, supporting each other in this difficult time. Later, the girl approached Kim to express her gratitude for the rescue and introduced herself as Kang Seong Hua, who was 14 years old. Kim interrupted her, saying that his help was not unselfish and he could not guarantee her safety throughout the ordeal that lay ahead. His words were harsher than he intended, and they provoked the girl's fear of being left to fend for herself. When Kang Seong Hua cried out, begging him not to leave her alone, Kim realized that his words might have sounded too harsh. He explained that he could not promise her complete protection for the rest of their journey, as even his own survival was in doubt. But what was important was his assurance that he would not push her away unless her presence was an immediate threat to his life, which was at least some comfort to Kang Seong Hua in this uncertain world. Kim strongly suggested that Kang Seong Hua rest, emphasizing the need to be rested before leaving the supermarket the next day, as they would be facing a new stage of survival the next day. As Kim was preparing to leave, a message appeared in front of him with a list of safe zones, a school, a convenience store, a hospital, and an additional zone, the Guangwaman Tower, which seemed to be of key importance. He carefully reviewed the information, contemplating which location would be the best choice for further shelter, and gathered his belongings in preparation for leaving in the morning. When they finally opened the doors of the supermarket, Kang Sung Hua stayed behind Kim, ready to follow his lead. What they saw beyond the threshold resembled a scene from their worst nightmares. The streets were covered with corpses and the air was permeated with the smell of death and despair. A picture of the apocalypse was unfolding before them, which shocked even the experienced Kim. Kang Sung Hua tried to keep her cool, but her eyes spoke of inner fear. The city that was once full of life had now turned into a wasteland, where the only witnesses to the events were soulless bodies. Seeing the fear in the girl's eyes, Kim realized how much the situation had affected her psyche. He asked her to be very careful and beware of the dangers that could lurk at every step of their journey. He emphasized the importance of caution in this dangerous world. Kim instructed Kang Seong Hua to warn him of any danger or unusual things she noticed during their journey. They hadn't gone far when the girl pointed out a strange creature right in their path. It was a jelly that was moving in the middle of the road. Kim was surprised to meet a slime so quickly. These creatures were considered neutral monsters, so their threat level was not clearly indicated. He regarded the slime as easy prey, and using a rusty sword he quickly cut it in two. Having destroyed the jelly, Kim received some coins and additional experience, which was a small but pleasant reward. While using the sword, Kim felt a strange DGC Daijuji Vu, as if his hands remembered his old fighting skills, even though this was his first real fight with a sword. The appearance of the rusty iron sword notification reminded him of the weapon's modest performance, but that didn't stop him from fighting. On the way they encountered another jelly, and Kim easily dealt with it, making it the fifth monster he had destroyed in a row. His level increased, bringing two bonus characteristic points and one bonus random characteristic point, which was a significant improvement in his abilities. When Kim began to emit a faint glow after leveling up, Kang Sung Hua asked what was going on not understanding the nature of the phenomenon. When she found out that you can level up by destroying monsters, her surprise knew no bounds. Her promise to herself to become stronger sparkled in her eyes like a light of newborn determination. Swinging his sword, which felt strangely familiar in his hands, he cut through the jelly monsters with such agility that it was as if he were dancing with death to the rhythm of a long-forgotten waltz. His level increased, reaching the third level. This fact flashed before his eyes like a badge of honor engraved on a warrior's shield. The speed with which he raised his level surprised even himself, leaving a trace of indescribable intrigue in the back of his mind. Again, the message came about the bonus point of a random characteristic, challenging his ability to adapt for the second time. The King of Fists, mentioned in ancient records as a warrior who had passed through trials by fire and sword, involuntarily resonated in his memory. Turning the pages of the past, he recalled the repeated test that had brought down the thunder of unrecognized talent on him until the door to the talent panel opened. Now he was beginning to realize that he might be an early bloomer, a player who shows unprecedented growth at the dawn of his career. As they walked along, they did not notice the figure of the administrator materialize behind them, like a shadow coming from the depths of the night. Having reached the third level, he somehow attracted the attention of the guards, becoming the center of the whirlwind of events. The realization that he could be an early bloomer filled him with unwavering determination. 
With his sword in hand, which was already beginning to lose its luster, he rushed into battle with renewed vigor, as if this particular test would decide his fate. Another jelly monster fell before him, split in half by a powerful stroke of his sword that sliced through the air with an ease he had never experienced before. With each swing, his blows became only stronger, as if each enemy that fell at his hand added to his strength. The fire of struggle burned in his eyes as he cut through the monsters one by one, holding in his heart the knowledge of an elixir that could heal mana in three years. This goal, worth billions, was the beacon that guided them through the darkness. As he approached the tower where he continued his relentless fight against the slimes, his level skyrocketed to level 5, providing him with two additional bonus characteristic points. Discovering the system's new feature of creating groups after reaching level 5, he immediately sent an invitation to his companion to join. She soon became part of the group, attracting the attention of a mysterious observer whose intentions remained a mystery. Promising support, she showed an unbending will to help him despite all obstacles. Watching her, he couldn't help but feel pity for her. But at the same time, his thoughts were preoccupied with his own survival and the challenges ahead. In the tower, where an extremely strong monster was waiting for them, he realized that he would not be able to protect her in a direct fight, which called into question their joint ability to survive. Observing the unusual animal among the ruins, the girl asked her companion anxiously if it was a monster. A level 3 urban fox appeared in front of them, a creature that had neutral intentions but a specific ability. It's a neutral monster that can provoke others to attack. It's better to go around it, the player whispered. But the situation suddenly turned out not in their favor. One of the foxes sank its teeth into her arm, and the others began to attack from all sides, creating a chaotic whirlwind of pain and panic. Grabbing his sword, he rushed to her aid, but noticed that despite the attacks, the girl was not injured although the situation was becoming more and more threatening. Scattering the enemies with light sword movements, he freed the girl from the claws of the foxes, showing true martial arts skill. She watched as the blue energy enveloped him again, giving him strength and confidence in every movement. Killing the foxes had raised his level, which came as a surprise and a challenge for him to continue. An administrator appeared behind him, mysteriously asking about his level, as if measuring his potential with a single glance. When he replied that he had reached level 8, the administrator could barely hide his surprise, as this progress was far beyond expectations. An unfamiliar observer hidden in the shadows of the world expressed deep surprise at the player's growth rate, while the anonymous guards exchanged amazed glances, feeling that they had witnessed something out of the ordinary. The player himself considered his rapid progress to be somewhat strange, as if his path was ahead of the generally accepted norms of the world. Calling up the status window in front of him, he confirmed his suspicions. The characteristics for the 8th level looked too impressive, not as he expected. Despite the unusualness of the situation, the player took it as a great opportunity to open up new horizons. Turning to the girl, he pointed to a huge building, explaining that their next goal would be the dungeon of this tower, promising unprecedented trials and adventures. After explaining the plan of action inside the dungeon, he emphasized the importance of following his instructions, as their survival would depend on it. As he continued his way to the tower, he kept killing city foxes, each of which brought him valuable experience. His status window was already showing impressive numbers. Level 8, Stamina 14, Strength 14, Dexterity 14, Intelligence 14, Perception 14, Spirit 13. He gave the girl an old pair of iron gauntlets he had obtained during one of their hunts, signaling the completion of their training and readiness to execute the plan. Before entering the dungeon, he confidently told her that it was time to go deeper. The girl's response was full of trepidation, but her voice was determined. Okay. Standing in front of the entrance to Tower D's training dungeon, they noticed a sign stating that they needed to reach level 5 to enter, which only emphasized the seriousness of their mission. An interactive question sign appeared in front of them. Do you really want to enter Tower D? His choice was unwavering. After confirming their choice, they found themselves together on the threshold of the tower, ready to go through the training dungeon that opened before them. Opening the door, they saw a battlefield before them. Goblins and foxes ruled the space, creating chaos and unpredictability. Acting according to the plan, she dared to attack the goblins first, fortified by the iron gauntlets that gave her confidence. The goblins were the first real test for her, but she rushed into battle with confidence and determination. Face to face with the aggressive goblins, she bravely repelled their attacks without wasting a second. It turned out that by attacking the goblins, they would avoid the first attack from the foxes which gave them a strategic advantage. Watching her actions, the player couldn't help but admire her abilities. 
She coped with the challenges even better than he expected, showing real fighting talent. Despite the goblin's attempts to harm her, she easily exceeded all expectations, demonstrating not only courage, but also impressive skills in combat. The player warned the girl about the approaching mini-boss that would appear after all the goblins and foxes on the first floor were killed, emphasizing the need to continue fighting without rest. She rushed into the battle with renewed fervor, decisively dealing with every goblin and fox that came her way, demonstrating extraordinary courage and bravery. The heads of the foxes which were pressed into the floor under her onslaught were a testament to her unbridled fighting energy. Suddenly, the player's own pause effect activated, freezing everything around him and causing a series of messages to appear from anonymous observers and the Lion King expressing their surprise and interest. The pause effect created an instant pause in the zone, attracting the attention of not only the heroes of the story, but also mysterious characters from the game world. The administrator, having used a precious item to activate the pause, appeared in front of the player, asking if he had lost his mind, as such actions were extraordinary. Her curiosity about the player increased because of his behavior, which indicated that he had foreseen the events that were about to take place. The administrator thought his actions were unreasonable because summoning the mini-boss, a level 13 goblin soldier, could have unpredictable consequences. Emphasizing that the mini-boss had enhanced characteristics, the administrator hinted at the great danger he posed. Following the administrator's warning, the player realized that at their current level, even with the girl, they would not be able to defeat such a strong opponent. Undaunted by the administrator's disagreement, the player asked her if she really cared about his fate. Her piercing look, full of incomprehension of his words, only confirmed his guess. He became a character who was the focus of not only the administrator's attention, but the entire game. Administrator Senya recognized that his ability to predict events made him exceptional, but also potentially dangerous to the stability of their world. The player, looking steadfastly into her eyes, realized that his success was important to the administrator because she was counting on his abilities in the future. He allowed himself to think that if she was so light on his life, then perhaps her own career in the game administration was not so successful. Interrupting her, he said that no matter what, he would defeat the goblin boss, demonstrating his determination and self-confidence. He promised that his victory would make her famous and respected among her colleagues, and her show would become an unprecedented success. However, he set a condition. If he was to help her achieve this, he wanted the deal on his terms. The administrator was overcome with anger, and she showed her power by creating a yellow ball of fire in her hand, ready to use it against the player for insubordination. However, her anger quickly subsided and she calmed down, asking him what kind of deal he was offering, ready to listen to his terms. Meanwhile, the girl continued her way through the ranks of the enemies without wasting a minute, raising her level to the seventh, which further strengthened her position in this dangerous game. Thanks to the girl's efforts, all the monsters on the stage were defeated, and she called the player to her side to report her success. She enthusiastically ran up to him, sharing the news that all the enemies were killed, and now they were ready to meet the mini-boss. The conditions for the appearance of the mini-boss, a goblin soldier, were met, and they noticed his huge feet already standing on the threshold of the front door to the room. The goblin soldier appeared, creating a monster-boss zone around him, surrounded by his subjects, small goblins. When the player saw the mini-boss, he realized that in reality it was much bigger and more threatening than he could have imagined. The monster swung his spear preparing to attack, emphasizing the danger that awaited them. Hiding behind the wall, the player analyzes the situation, trying to find the most effective way to defeat the goblin. He realized that the key to victory is to avoid a spear attack that crashed into the wall next to them with great force. After dodging the attack, the player stood up, preparing for a counterattack, and signaled to the girl that he was ready to take action. Together with the girl, they faced the challenge, joining forces to start the battle with the mini-boss, each of them ready for their role in the upcoming confrontation. Turning to the administrator, who was watching the scene from the rear, the challenging player said that she would witness how he, a level 8 player, could defeat the mini-boss, emphasizing his determination and self-confidence. The player stepped forward to meet the goblin boss, preparing for the battle with a rusty sword in his hands, symbolizing not only his courage, but also his readiness to face the trials of fate. The goblin soldier, holding his weapon, was preparing for a decisive strike, demonstrating his superiority in weapons and fighting skills. The mini-boss made a deadly throw of his spear, which turned out to be much more threatening than expected, forcing the player and the girl to reassess their strategy. After a failed attempt to hit the spear, the goblin did not hesitate to rush at the survivors, seeking to resolve the battle with a quick attack. The player had to prepare for two types of goblin attacks, 
a piercing spear, or a powerful swing, which required maximum concentration and reaction. The goblin missed the swing, and the spear flew only a few centimeters away from the player's back, which was a real test of his agility. Having barely avoided the attack, the player managed to launch a counterattack, although he was only able to lightly wound the goblin without causing significant damage. This small success only enraged the mini-boss more, who was preparing for a new, even more aggressive attack, determined to deliver a critical blow. The goblin, burning with anger, was preparing to make a decisive piercing with his spear, raising the stakes in this battle where every move could decide the fate of the fight. The player, having gathered all his will and strength, prepares for a decisive attack on the goblin, trying to find a weak spot in the mini-boss's defense. Meanwhile, the girl finds herself in a difficult situation, surrounded by a pack of foxes and small goblins who are attacking her from all sides in a coordinated manner. One of the foxes made a decisive leap and bit her on the neck, which added to her pain and made it difficult to defend herself against the rest of the monsters. The situation has attracted the attention of a huge number of anonymous observers, as well as the administrator himself, who are watching the developments with tension and curiosity. The administrator, watching the player, began to doubt his ability to defeat the mini-boss, given his allegedly low 8th level. The player's movements were unusually skillful and efficient for a player of his level, causing surprise and disbelief among the observers. Suspicions that the player might have reached his level dishonestly began to emerge, as his combat actions were significantly different from those expected. Despite the huge disparity in size and strength, the player stood in front of the goblin, ready for a confrontation, holding his rusty weapon at the ready. He understood that direct attacks might not bring a quick victory over the boss, but properly targeted blows could significantly weaken his stamina. The goblin prepares for a mighty swing again, emphasizing his determination to end the fight with a victory over his opponents. Faced with a pack of goblins and foxes, the girl summoned all her strength and courage to survive this difficult battle. With a wave of her iron gauntlet, she used all her strength, striking one of the goblins right in the face, which was not only a turning point in the battle, but also brought her additional experience. Each of her blows became more confident and stronger, which allowed her to quickly raise her level, using every opportunity to gain an advantage over her enemies. The administrator, watching the development of events, was deeply impressed by the girl's courage and ability to withstand the superiority of her opponents. Meanwhile, each successful strike of the player not only damaged the mini-boss, but also increased its level, bringing it closer to the ninth. With each strike, the player's sword became more and more worn out, requiring him to be more careful and resourceful in battle. Leveling up allowed the player not only to improve his characteristics, but also to restore his health, which became a key factor in the strategy of survival in this difficult situation. The player, having made sure that the girl was ready to continue the fight, urged her to keep the enemies at bay, preparing for the next phase of the battle. Restoring each other's strength and increasing the chances of defeating the mini-boss, having identified the goblin's weak point, the back of the neck, the player prepared to use this chance to the fullest, deciding to make a decisive and decisive blow. At this time, each blow struck by the girl significantly increased her experience, allowing her to quickly level up and become even stronger. The goblin, having gathered all his strength, made a powerful swing directed against his enemies, showing that he was not yet ready to give up without a fight. The player, analyzing the situation, realized that this was the attack he was most afraid of, but decided to face it head on. The goblin's spear pierced the player's shoulder, causing him a severe blow, but at the same time it gave him an impetus to continue fighting. Despite the considerable damage received from this blow, the player found the strength not only to resist, but also to respond, and his level rapidly increased to 10th. Thanks to his stamina and desire to win, the player was able to pay back the goblin by making a decisive stab with his sword directly into its neck. Circling the goblin from behind, the player effectively sliced through its neck, delivering a critical blow that was decisive in this battle. The goblin, having lost its strength, let out a desperate cry, not expecting to be defeated by such seemingly insignificant opponents. Although the player's sword was almost destroyed, he found the last strength to use it to deliver the final victorious blow, ending this epic battle. During the climactic strike, the sword broke and shattered into pieces. Stuck in the goblin's neck, the blade had no chance of being removed. He managed to cope with the mini-boss, a goblin warrior showing real skill. The victory was counted as a solo pass. His little friend is already rushing to congratulate him on his victory, beaming with joy. The level restriction in the training area has disappeared, allowing him to grow in strength again. He involuntarily hugs her, grateful for her tireless efforts in fighting the goblins and foxes. He has just fulfilled one of the conditions for revealing a secret achievement. In Guanghuaman, the streets are filled with white foxes, creating a unique atmosphere. 
Other players face off against these urban predators, clearing the streets of the dangerous threat. The young man easily sends the fox to the other side with one punch, demonstrating his superiority. In the training area, this guy stands out for his incredible strength, causing admiration and awe in the hearts of others. After defeating the monsters, they noticed other players. The young man waved to them, inviting them to talk. Their eyes caught sight of a couple, a boy and a girl, who, having overcome the test of their strength, were resting on the street. After this test, the guardian, known as the woman with the scales, who personified absolute goodness, unlike the Lion King, preferred the safety of the players, generously supporting them. She sent her administrator to the player to deliver an important message. Upon arrival, the administrator began to use his yellow magic, infusing it into further actions. As a result, the player received an iron sword of normal quality and strength with an attack power of 4 out of 12, a bonus for defeating the monster. With the new sword, the hero was ready to face a level 7 urban wolf, feeling confident in his own abilities. But the hero's new goal was far beyond mere survival. A portal opened up in front of them, which became the way to the city. After passing through the portal, they found themselves in the city, where they met a surprised young man who was incredulous about their survival. Their meeting was the beginning of a new chapter. Although it was the first time the player saw this young man, he immediately recognized him as if they had known each other for a long time. He turned out to be the King of Fists, one of the eight most famous players in Korea, who would later become a legend. The King of Fists, surrounded by a crowd of rescued people, curiously asked the players how they managed to survive in such conditions. He felt the potential in the boy, and offered him to join his team, considering him a valuable addition. The player replied that he and the girl could rely on each other and politely declined the offer, emphasizing their independence. The girl watched their interaction with interest. The King of Fists, surprised by this refusal, scratched the back of his head and, although regretful, respectfully wished the player good luck. The crowd behind them was amazed at the player's decision to refuse such an honor. Before he left, the player turned to the King of Fists and gave him some friendly advice. In his advice, he said that when facing a particularly strong monster, you should aim for the left eye, which made the King of Fists think twice. At first, the King of Fists did not understand the meaning of this advice. But after thinking about it, he expressed his gratitude, feeling that it could be useful. Despite the fact that the heroes had to move on, the girl's curiosity remained unsatisfied, and she asked anxiously if these people would manage without their help. The player reassured the girl, saying that the people around the King of Fists seemed strong enough, but they should keep their own safety in mind above all else. Despite the outward confidence, he realized that they had serious challenges to face. According to the King of Fists' memoir, Yu Hyun and a dozen survivors will find themselves in the dungeon of Tower D where they will face difficult trials. After successfully completing the first level, their attempt to conquer the second floor will result in the appearance of an unexpected enemy who will almost completely destroy the group, leaving Yu Hyun as the only survivor. After receiving a title for completing the training and becoming the first person to clear the dungeons of Tower D, Yu Hyun admits that attempting to pass the second floor was the biggest mistake of his life. Continuing his journey with the girl, the player realizes that this time, everything can be different but joining them is too risky. The girl notices the monsters ahead and points at them, showing her attentiveness. Thanks to her keen eyesight, she can clearly see the wolves ahead and realizes that they must be stopped. The wolves let out a frightening roar, their eyes blazing with an unrelenting red light. Demonstrating mutual understanding and teamwork, they rush together to fight the wolves, holding their weapons tightly in their hands. The girl, like an experienced warrior, deftly killed one of the wolves with the first blow, showing extraordinary skill. The iron sword made it much easier for the player to fight monsters, making each blow more confident and effective. His new goal was not just to complete dungeons, but to remove the level limit, which required him to be focused and dedicated to the goal. The main goal was to reach level 10, which could be achieved by killing monsters and gaining experience. Wolves turned out to be much more valuable in terms of experience than foxes, allowing the player to level up faster. In the fight against wolves, the girl's bat proved to be more effective than any metal fists, giving her an advantage in battle. Killing these wolves allowed the player to reach level 11, becoming the first to reach this mark, setting the bar high for others. He was presented with a notification of the title of Discoverer for his achievement, honoring him as a pioneer. This honorary title, given to the pioneer of new territories, brings incredible bonuses, emphasizing his contribution to the exploration of the game world. After completing this level, they continued their journey forward, armed with a bat and an iron sword, ready for new challenges. From her vantage point, the administrator closely monitored the player and the girl's movements, studying their every move. 
Their ability to successfully navigate their way through the challenges attracted the attention of not only the administrator, but also the guardians, arousing their growing curiosity. After receiving a message from the guard, the administrator was ordered to conduct a full investigation to understand the essence of the player's success. The administrator did not lose her attention, continuing to follow the route of the heroes, trying to predict their next steps. Her interest and persistence were so pronounced that her emotional state became obvious. This interest deepened when she learned that the player was awarded the title of Discoverer. But the details of this title remained a mystery to her. The administrator faced difficulties trying to find out more about the player's title, as information about player titles remained confidential until the official announcement. Her job was made more difficult by the player's reluctance to share information, forcing her to keep the guard in suspense and anticipation. Today's route of the heroes was to Chongyichan, and they planned to continue their journey there tomorrow. At the same time, a large number of people gathered near Gwangamun. The crowd's discussion of the newly discovered dungeon sparked excitement and speculation about the potential dangers and rewards that lay in its depths. The organizer tried to encourage people by emphasizing that while the unknown of the dungeon held risks, the changes in the world made those risks worth the great rewards. Having convinced the crowd of the prospect of a joint hike, the organizer invited everyone to unite and share the future loot. One by one, the crowd members began to agree with the plan and expressed their willingness to act together with the aforementioned Shu Hyun. In the end, the collective spirit rose so high that everyone unanimously decided to set out on an adventure the next day, planning thorough preparations for the raid. Meanwhile, the player and the girl continued to effectively clear the streets of wolves, gaining experience and improving their skills. Repeated encounters with wolves allowed them to become much more agile and effective in combat, as the girl noticed. During the second day of their hiking, they reached level 12, killing monsters faster than they appeared, demonstrating incredible progress. As a result of their success in hunting wolves, they collected many useful items and coins. Among them was a rare trophy, the Mutant Wolf's Call. Noticing a new wolf on the opposite side of the road, the girl pointed to it, saying that it was another enemy that had appeared out of the blue. Perhaps this wolf was the last one in the area. The player, grabbing his sword, approached the wolf with determination, ready to fight. His stroke was quick and accurate, cutting the wolf in two with one powerful swing. Suddenly, a red notification appeared in front of the player, announcing that all the conditions of the mysterious task had been met. Reaching level 12, defeating 500 city wolves, and revealing the knowledge of the hidden figure. Immediately after that, the lycanthrope wolf king appeared from under the asphalt through a red portal, causing surprise and anxiety. The player did not expect such a development and had to make a quick decision. Turning to the girl, he ordered her to run away immediately, sensing a serious threat. There was no time for explanations, only an urgent need to act to escape imminent danger. The lycanthrope, a huge wolf with iron claws, was much stronger than any monster they had ever faced before, making them feel helpless. His howl, which echoed throughout the city, became a warning to all its inhabitants. His cry is so powerful that the surrounding air explodes with energy, imposing a paralyzing howl effect on the players enveloping them like invisible shackles. Under the weight of this unnatural pressure, the girl falls to the ground unsteadily, like a doll thrown by the inexorable hand of fate. The player, gathering the remnants of his strength, breaks free from the invisible burden, shouting out to his companion to seek shelter behind a nearby car. The silhouette of an unknown creature looms in the translucent haze that fills the field of view. But the belief that a lycanthrope could be hiding in the darkness would seem nothing more than delusion, until they see it with their own eyes, endowed with a power beyond any known enemy. Trying to focus, the player realizes that the level of the enemy remains a mystery to him, as his own abilities are not sufficient for such a challenge. In the face of an imminent threat, the question arises of how to proceed, because the path to escape is already blocked, and only a feeling of overwhelming fear grows before your eyes. At this critical moment, like a brilliant flash, the player comes up with the idea to use the elixir of power, which soon turns him into a fighting machine ready for incredible achievements. Thanks to this decision, the player takes on the role of a great adventurer, implementing Jackson's legendary strategy, which seemed incredible to an ordinary person. The monster, like a monster from the deepest nightmares, instantly attacks, demonstrating its unearthly strength and speed, which make the player's heart freeze in anticipation of the inevitable clash. Meanwhile, the girl hidden behind the car does not miss a single detail of the battle, her eyes imperceptibly filled with a mixture of anxiety and delight at what is unfolding in front of her. Watching from the outside, the girl sees a picture as if torn from legend. A huge monster with claws comparable to its head is rushing to meet the young hero, who stands steadfastly with a briefcase in his hands, 
ready for a confrontation. The system voice injects realism into this fantasy, warning that an enemy whose level cannot be determined is becoming unattainable for victory. As if a sentence pronounced from unknown heights, the hero recalls the instructions of his teacher, who always emphasized that they should not face such powerful opponents at their level. Words that echo in his mind like a bell. Despair and determination intertwine in his thoughts as he realizes that if he cannot avoid the battle, there is only one way to go. Straight into the danger. The same lesson he learned when he first heard about the method that is now to become his key to defeating the monster. The player focuses on every word of the sage, preparing to put the knowledge into practice. Diving into the depths of his inventory, he pulls out a bottle of the highest quality lubricant, a universal remedy that can be decisive in this battle. The first gesture of the lycanthrope's aggression is a huge leap, during which he bends down, preparing to deliver a fatal blow, all enveloped in anticipation of violence. With incredible agility, the player dodges the attack, taking refuge behind the beast's back, as if dancing with death, where every step makes all the difference. At the moment when the lycanthrope lands, preparing for another rapid dash, the player seizes his chance by spilling lube right in front of it, a trap hidden in wait. And so the monster's foot steps on the slippery trap, instantly losing traction, forcing it to seek balance at the last decisive moment. At the critical moment, when the lycanthrope loses its balance on the slippery surface, the player strikes with all his might right into the monster's stomach, using the moment of surprise to his advantage. The force of the blow, enhanced by the elixir, is incredible, allowing the player not only to strike, but also to cause significant damage to the huge creature. Remembering the teacher's advice to use the size of the enemy against him, the player resorts to a trick, deciding to make the huge enemy lose his balance and fall into the water. This plan is realized with amazing accuracy, using the monster's weaknesses to the player's advantage. The girl sitting next to him is filled with disbelief at what she has seen, because just a few minutes ago, a horrifying scene was unfolding before her eyes. Once in the water, the lycanthrope begins to feel electrical impulses running through its body, causing it to shrink in size and lose its power. Watching this, the girl notices how the powerful enemy becomes much smaller, taking on the appearance of an ordinary wolf. Water always has this effect on them. Now his strength has decreased significantly. He looks more like an ordinary wolf, the player explains, sharing his observations with the girl. It seems to her as if he has mastered some kind of martial art, and she does not hold back from asking about it. But the player smiles, answering that he was just preparing for an exam. Following him, she jokingly says that he is a real hero as if from a movie. You go boom bang and then bam. These words make him smile sincerely because such a turn of events would seem unbelievable even in his wildest dreams. Plunging into the waters where the lycanthrope has lost its power, the player draws his sword and then everything happens as you might expect, a decisive blow that puts an end to the battle. First a huge beast and now just a helpless wolf lying motionless. Its death is a testament to the player's wit and strategic thinking. Success in the battle gives the player a well-deserved level increase, up to 13, marking his growing skill. But this is only the beginning. The first level up is soon followed by others, first to 14, then to 15, each of which is accompanied by windows with messages about new achievements. Having received the title of Excellent Hunter, the player also wins a hidden figure of a lycanthrope, which becomes a testament to his victory over a powerful enemy. The bonuses and coins keep coming, and messages from other bosses in the game's world, the woman with the scales, the unknown observer, and the brave Lion King, show their admiration for his actions. It would seem that even the game administrator was not indifferent to this event, appearing near the player as if to anticipate his success. She not only confirms his new level, but also prepares to reveal to him the secrets of the item store that opens thanks to his new achievements. At first, the player doubts the availability of this new feature, but the administrator quickly dispels his doubts, assuring him of the opportunities that are opening up. In the item store, players can use the coins they earn to purchase special items. Studying the assortment of the store, the player comes to the conclusion that four items will be more than enough for the training area for the upcoming challenges. The administrator suddenly interrupts his thoughts with a personal question. She wonders if the player can share his real name, adding a touch of mystery to their interaction. The player, a little surprised by this question, answers evasively, noting the indirect signs of curiosity on the part of the administrator, despite her attempts to hide it. Without wasting a moment, the administrator suggests checking other awards and titles to which the player replies that he will do so personally, hinting at a desire to maintain a certain distance. The player decides not to reveal all the cards at once, preferring to maintain an atmosphere of mystery and intrigue. As he prepares to continue his journey, he shares his plans with the girl, 
who is curious about their next steps. They decide to go down to the dungeon, to the second floor of the tower, where new trials and adventures await them. On the second floor, a monster awaits them, much more dangerous than their previous opponents. This challenge is taken on by a warrior who, having gathered a team, finds himself in a lonely battle with a terrifying enemy, demonstrating courage and readiness to fight for a common goal. In the face of the unknown, the young man stood alone against the monster, face to face with danger. Rushing forward with all his strength, he threw a punch straight at the monster's head. The iron gloves on his hands did their job, increasing the damage. The answer was not long in coming. The giant goblin hit him right in the chest, and the retaliation was instant. Standing next to the giant, the young man could not believe that he had survived so many blows. The fight seemed like a battle against an unyielding wall. He needed a plan. He remembered a conversation with another player who had advised him to aim straight for the eye. His thoughts were interrupted by the goblin's fist, which suddenly appeared near his head. Gathering all his strength, he managed to avoid the blow, finding himself right under the giant's hand. However, the goblin's next punch hit him right in the head, and blood splattered. The power of the blow sent the young man flying away as if he were in a wind tunnel, losing control. The goblin's attention suddenly shifted to the appearance of a new player, adding tension to the already chaotic battle. When the player and his companion entered the boss zone, a message appeared before their eyes. Escape is possible only for the next 10 seconds. However, they were not facing a goblin, but a magic troll of an unknown level, a riddle waiting to be solved. The player, Yu Hung, who had just fought the goblin, lay moaning in pain, gripped by suffering after being hit by a powerful blow. The player's glance at Yu Hung revealed his helplessness. He was unconscious, surrendered to fate. Acting decisively, the player turned to his inventory and pulled out a weak healing potion, hoping for a miracle. Even with the slightest of efforts, the man from Hyun's team, who was also badly injured, barely spoke a word, advising the player and the girl to run away as fast as possible. Seung Hua took the potion from the player and was ordered to distribute it to all the injured, including the young man, sharing the hope equally. The player was determined to fight the troll, while the others had to stay out of his way and provide rear guard. Thus, the player found himself face to face with a giant troll, the third monster on his path, but still undefeated. The boss of the second level of the tower was a mystery that seemed to be known best by the player who was ready for new challenges. It turned out that the troll's name glowed red, like a lycanthrope, signaling the extreme difficulty of defeating it. The red name meant that its level was so high that it could not be detected. Trolls are known for their survivability and endurance. Their property is their boss strength and resistance to physical attacks, making them difficult opponents. Yu Hung suffered almost no damage from melee, more from weapons. He sat leaning against the wall, barely feeling his body. The player, feeling no fear, armed himself with a sword and bravely moved to fight the troll. The people who had previously suffered from the troll's attack shouted at him, advising him to run away and save himself. The angry troll struck so hard that even the floor could not withstand it breaking into pieces. The player knew his opponent well, which allowed him to predict that each subsequent blow of the troll would become slower. Before the troll knew it, the player was behind him, and the wind from the player's sword rustled next to his head, leaving a cut on it. The player did not have a clear strategy against the troll. The blow he struck was insignificant. It seemed that only constant attacks could work against such an opponent, giving him no chance to recover. The King of Fists, whom the player was familiar with, was able to defeat the troll and win the title thanks to one key advantage. He threw many punches in a row. This tactic was effective because the continuous rain of blows did not give the troll a chance to recover or counterattack. At the same time, the player's companion tirelessly distributed potions to everyone who needed help, trying to heal wounds and support the soldiers. During the clash, the player activates the effect of the Excellent Hunter, which allows him to predict the trajectories of the troll's attacks and dodge thanks to the points invested in agility. The player could relieve fatigue from the intense battle with the troll with the help of potions purchased in the store, which gave him a short-term recovery. Looking at the troll, the player noticed that the giant was starting to get tired. If you are careful, there is a chance to defeat him completely. The troll rushes at the player with all his might, starting a grueling battle where every blow counts. The battle was marked by blood splattering in all directions, leaving scattered traces on the ground and weapons. All the observers present were stunned and fascinated by the player's courage and endurance, wondering who he was. The battle had been going on for an hour, and the player was feeling very exhausted. His sword was covered in blood, evidence of a difficult struggle for victory. Every blow the player struck at the troll was proof of incredible endurance and strength. Observers could not believe that an ordinary person was capable of such a thing but few knew about his true level. 
Among the spectators, there was a man who noted that this player was much stronger than Yu Hung, whose fame was known far beyond the battle. The troll, although receiving numerous blows, was still standing, although he could barely hold on. Suddenly, a message appears on the screen stating that the troll's regeneration ability has disappeared, giving the player the advantage. In the past, as a top player, he could never have imagined facing such a dangerous opponent. Kim Hyuk Jin, once a civil servant, turned into a player, changing his fate and taking on a new role. The player realized that the clock was ticking, and with 15 minutes left, he raised his sword above his head, preparing to deliver the last, decisive blows. The player was surprised by a window that appeared above him, informing him that the brave Lion King wanted to help him by granting him the gift of outstanding strength. The power of the player's next attack increased by 100%, giving him confidence in his movements. A thought flashed through the player's mind, mixed with surprise and disbelief. Why now? But he quickly focused on the goal. Using this incredible gift, the player deals double damage to the troll, making the most of the advantage he has gained. At this point, the damage count lost all meaning, as the player skillfully sliced through the troll from the top of its head to the bottom of its body, causing blood to gush from its nose, beard, and neck. Despite all the difficulties, this was a clear victory for the player over one of the strongest enemies on his path, causing the audience to have mixed feelings of admiration and relief. The troll, falling to his knees, began to howl in pain and despair, having suffered unspeakable suffering at the hands of his victor. The mystery remained. Why did the Lion King decide to help the player? This accidental help changed the course of the battle, raising many questions. Standing in front of the giant, the player had a unique opportunity to end the life of his powerful enemy, making the troll his first significant victory. However, red energy suddenly flashed above the troll, hinting at an unexpected turn of events. The player, realizing the danger, realized that his plan had failed, and now the only way out was to immediately flee the battlefield. Yu Heng, who had previously fought the troll, was lying on the ground, barely opening his eyes, when a girl with a potion approached him, bringing him hope for salvation. With great difficulty, he gathered the last of his strength to get up and sit down, eagerly asking the girl about the monster's fate, to which she replied by pointing in the direction of the boss. Looking at the troll, they both realized that they were facing not just any enemy, but the boss himself. A completely different, unknown energy suddenly flashes over the troll, changing the atmosphere around it. The bow is held with tension and a decisive shot is made. The player turns around, not expecting this development. He thinks pensively, who could have done that? The arrow pierces the troll's head with incredible accuracy, hitting it right in the eye. Standing in front of the troll, the player sees a young man with a bow behind him, who has just made a good shot. After killing the troll, the archer explains that he couldn't let anyone else take their prey because they were the first to arrive. The player thinks anxiously about his achievements, which can now be taken away by this stranger. He calls out to the young gunslinger to flee, but the latter, not understanding, asks, What? The player repeats his warning more decisively emphasizing the impossibility of protecting him in this situation. A message appears on the screen. Boss Magic Troll has lost his mind. The boss is going berserk. At the crucial moment, the player rushes to Xionghua, shouting that they need to run away immediately. They run away together, because the boss's loss of sanity causes the boss zone to vanish into thin air. An escalator to the first floor appears in front of them. The mini-boss area of the tower, which can accommodate up to 15 people, has no limit for going down. The young man who shot the boss in the eye with an arrow also tries to escape, but... The boss grabs him by the head with one hand and slams him to the floor with terrifying force, crushing his head. Yu Hyun finds himself right behind the monster, who turns his head in his direction, causing Yu Hyun to feel imminently threatened. The player and Seung Hwa speed up their run to the escalator, hoping to escape the boss's uncontrollable rage. In this moment, the player realizes that he has made a mistake, allowing the situation to get out of hand. He realizes that the chaotic events caused by the greed of the other players are partly his fault, as he did not take them into account in his plan. Now that the boss zone has disappeared and the boss has entered the berserker state, he is not limited to the second floor. Upon reaching the entrance to the escalator, the player turns to Seung Hua, saying that they need to go downstairs immediately. On the second floor of the parking garage is a safe zone, which the player prefers for their temporary shelter. That's where they should go now to avoid further danger. A troll suddenly starts chasing them, appearing behind them so quickly that they don't even have time to realize it. Their situation on the second floor becomes even more desperate, and the realization that everyone else is already dead only adds to the horror. With all his might, the troll rushes at them, intending to deliver a devastating blow. The girl at the last moment, 
makes a desperate jump after the player, who meanwhile falls on the escalator steps. In the air, the player manages to grab her, saving her from the blow, and lies down on his back, ready to take the full impact. The situation becomes critical. If the troll touches them at least once more, it could be the end of them. The troll is now right in front of the stairs. They have almost reached the place. They only have to go through the door to the parking lot to avoid danger. But as they approach the door, the system suddenly detects a critical situation. It starts checking the conditions of a unique situation, a forced awakening due to an unusual meeting with the boss. This message appears at the exact moment when the troll, standing right behind them, swings his fist. At a critical moment, when the player is about to face certain death, Xiong Hua suddenly appears in front of him, putting her hand in front of the troll's powerful punch. The energy of her defense, shining with a bright blue light, defies logic and explanation. Thus begins the decisive moment of their escape. The troll, radiating threat, rushes at them with the intention of inflicting a devastating blow, shouting that they will all die. It is at this moment that the woman, symbolizing the Libra, impressed by Xiong Hua's courage, decides to reward her with the ability Planning Shield. This skill, activated for the first time, manifests itself through a hitherto unknown physical force. The Planning Shield distributes the damage from the troll's blow, minimizing its effects. Xiong Hua is thrown to the side by the force of the blow, but the player, amazed by her ability and not understanding how she did it, now holds her in his arms unconscious. Despite the collision, the troll does not stop and continues to attack them. The player, realizing that every second counts, picks up Xiong Hua and rushes to the parking lot, their last safe haven. When he reaches the glass door, he ducks down with her body in his arms and slams his back into the door with all his might, breaking the glass and paving the way to freedom. With great difficulty they manage to get out, and the player, cautiously making sure they are safe, looks back to see where the troll is now. They found themselves in an additional security zone, and the troll, irritated to the point of annoyance, remained behind the glass. Unable to break through the glass, he growls, standing on the other side like a prisoner of his own aggression. They are lucky that the troll, despite its strength, cannot penetrate the security zone. However, there are monsters that can ignore such zones. The Berserker State, as it turns out, does not give the troll the ability to pass through the glass, and it attacks it powerlessly, enraged. Xiong Hua, who sacrificed herself to save them, now lies unconscious in his arms. Her small hands, which she used to stop the attack, have been crippled. The player can hardly believe her bravery. How Xiong Hua got this skill remains a mystery, but it saved them. The problem is that the distribution of damage could have damaged her brain. Given the troll's rapid transition to berserker state, its health must have been critically low. It becomes too hard for the troll. His body is stretched to the limit, and blood is splattered in all directions. Eventually, only his legs remain, and his body explodes, putting an end to his furious anger. After a fierce battle, the magical troll was killed, activating a defense mechanism for players below level 20 who were near the monster. An administrator appears and informs the player Kim Hyuk Jin that the troll's killing is credited to him. The training area disappears into thin air after the death of the training boss, signifying the successful completion of the introductory quest. The future difficulty level will be determined by the number of survivors in the training area. There are 5,087 survivors, which results in a low difficulty level. The results of the training phase are being summarized, but Kim's thoughts are focused elsewhere, on Seung Hua, who is unconscious in his arms. All participants receive a system reward, 1,000 coins and a set of armor for beginners. Individual awards will be given by mid-level administrators. The level limit for players who have completed the training has been removed. Kim Hyuk Jin receives an award after completing the training, and his name appears in the Hall of Fame. At this critical moment, Kim's main goal is to save Seung Hua, and everything else fades into the background. He turns to the administrator, reminding her of the deal she had previously offered him. And now he is ready to accept its terms if only to save Seung Hua. The administrator asks if Kim is sure about his decision to accept the deal since the store's rank will increase over time after he graduates, and all he has to do is wait. However, Kim could not wait. He was not interested in general terms and conditions, because he needed an exclusive contract that would allow him to purchase ten medicinal potions immediately. According to the terms of the contract between the player and the administrator, the guardians can only observe the player through the prism of this administrator. The more attention the player attracts, the more money the administrator receives. Kim realizes that his name is already associated with problems, which only increases his value in the game. He explains to the administrator that he doesn't have time to wait. Opening the flask with the medicine, Kim gives Seung Hua a drink, realizing that he owes her his life, because without her sacrifice he would not have survived the encounter with the troll. 
She had already drunk more than three flasks of medicine. Sitting next to her, Kim holds Seung Hwa in his arms, trying to wake her up. Suddenly, she opens her eyes wide and takes a deep breath, as if she can't believe she's alive. She sits up, recovering from her shock, and Kim tells her that what she did was incredible. Seeing the three flasks of medicine next to her, Seung Hwa realizes that Kim gave them to her to save her life. She reminds him of what he said about leaving her if he had his own problems. Kim is silent at first, then turns away, but eventually says that it would be a shame to leave her after everything she has been through. You didn't leave me, she says, and begins to cry with happiness. Administrator Senior is preparing to announce the individual awards, but Kim interrupts her, asking about the store's ranking. He points out that they didn't sign anything, to which Senya reacts with surprise. She is outraged at how easily he deceived her, as a document had to be signed to activate the deal. This becomes a rookie mistake for Senya's administrator. Seung Hua, standing next to Kim and leaning lightly against him, looks like a heroine next to her savior. Kim asks the administrator to give out individual awards. Senya, agreeing with the request, begins the process of awarding Kim, recognizing his contribution and bravery. Two windows with awards suddenly appeared in front of Kim, letting him know that he had hit the jackpot. The seven-day training ended, and the surviving players received rewards that matched their achievements. Kim understands that achieving such success is impossible without knowledge of battle strategy. The impact of his actions on the course of the training was enormous, and he hopes that the reward will match this contribution. The administrator appeared, recognizing him as an excellent hunter, and suggested that Kim check his rank. Kim quickly opened the rewards window, ready to see the results of his efforts. Even the title of Excellent Hunter was already something special for a player, but what was assigned to Kim exceeded all his expectations. He saw the conditions for raising his rank. One of these conditions included defeating a lycanthrope immediately after reaching level 10, a task that seemed almost impossible. Kim could never have imagined that it was possible to get such an outstanding rank in this game. He looks again at the two open reward windows and realizes that even the title for killing the lycanthrope pales in comparison to the last reward he received. The award Kim received was called Unification. It was given for his ability to overcome a deadly situation by using his sixth sense and fulfilling the conditions of unification. Little was known about such an award, and the information available was hardly ever kept, making this method of enhancement rare even among elite players. Kim gained access to the sixth sense unification gained in the battle with the troll. He was also offered the Eye of the Cold-Blooded Observer, a reward from beta testing, or as a bonus for excellent training, along with other titles. A window appeared with a suggestion to merge Sixth Sense Unification and Eye of the Cold-Blooded Observer, to which Kim clicks, yes. He waits for the merging effect to activate. Suddenly his attention is distracted by severe pain in his heart. The pain becomes so indescribable that Kim feels like his heart is going to explode. The process of unification is accompanied by incredible agony and he fears that he may die if he does not endure it. Blood spurts out of his mouth as Seung Hwa rushes to his side, trying to support him as best she can, even though she doesn't understand what's happening. Two messages appear on the screen. The merger was successful, and Kim receives the Eyes of Perception, a new ability that will undoubtedly change his fate in this world. Opening his eyes, Kim realizes that he is lying on a bed, but the area around him is not like the game world. He finds himself in a hospital, which shocks him. He can't believe he's alive after such an ordeal. His sister is sitting next to him worried about his condition. His sister is a devoted and attentive person whose character can change depending on the circumstances. And as it turns out, such information is now available to Kim thanks to his newly acquired ability Eyes of Perception. She immediately starts asking him how he could have taken such a reckless risk, going to school and disappearing for a whole Sunday. After a short conversation, the sister leaves the room, leaving Kim alone with his thoughts. But before she leaves, she expresses relief that he is still alive. Left alone outside the door, she thinks that Kim would be better off dead if he is going to risk his life again, because it is extremely difficult for her to worry about him. Kim looks around and notices a message box in front of her. The screen indicates that the merging process was completed when he lost consciousness, which explains his current condition and sudden transfer to the hospital. The new ability allowed Kim to feel his sister crying, which hurt him because he never wanted to see her in tears. Now. As one of the most popular and powerful players, Kim is able to change his family's life for the better by freeing his sister from having to work at the factory and helping his mother. They will finally have a chance to live as a real family, and Kim feels a responsibility to make it possible. His mother enters the ward to see her son. Sung Hua runs in after her happily, and her exclamations echo throughout the hospital. She hugs Kim, expressing her boundless joy and admits that she was afraid for his life. 
Now Kim realizes that he has returned to the past. The seven days of training is an event with a terrifying survival rate that is remembered even after decades, a test of talent and luck. However, Kim managed not only to survive, but also to gain incredible abilities that he could not have imagined. A month after the Cheongno disaster, the whole country learned the truth about the events in Seoul through news reports about an anonymous phenomenon known as the Apprenticeship. On the anniversary of the drill incident, the reporters invited a special guest to discuss the events of that terrible day. Upon entering the studio, he was immediately introduced as a hero who not only survived the deadly drill, but also took leadership in the most difficult conditions, helping many people. Mr. Su Yu Hyun took his seat at the table, collecting his thoughts. According to the survivors who met him, he played a key role in those events, the reporter said. He also recalled the scary goblins or wolves carrying weapons in their hands, and how Su saved people at the risk of his own life. He added that he had been honored with the title of trained, recognizing his heroism. But Su sat silent as he remembered Kim and Seung Hua, the outstanding player and the small but strong-minded girl. He humbly admitted that he was just lucky, and that the real heroes were others, not him, despite attempts to take all the credit. But modesty is often considered a sign of a hero, and it's obvious to everyone that you are the hero of this story, the reporter disagreed, turning his attention back to Su. No, I'm not, Su argued, emphasizing that rejecting fame is not modesty. He then told the story of the boy and girl who were also there with him, emphasizing their important role in the group's survival. They successfully defeated the troll, but he, as a top-level player, admitted that without them, he would have died. He frankly said that his life would have been lost if not for them. With his hand clenched in a fist in front of the cameras, he made a promise to repay them in the future. The scene changes. A small gate appears at the second entrance of Seoul Station on June 7th, leading to the station's dungeon. People panic and avoid this portal, not knowing where they should go. A girl asks Kim if they are going to enter it. Standing in front of her, he replies that of course they will enter the dungeons of Seoul Station, because channel number 19207 is open. Kim knows that many players in the future have come here to level up. Because if you know the right way to clear it, it's even easier than D-Tower. They started their journey, but Kim hears a warning that it is advisable to have at least seven players to enter. The mid-level administrator who appeared before him repeated this warning, emphasizing its importance. The administrator warned that it was extremely dangerous to enter the dungeon alone, advising them to return with a larger group. Despite the warning, Kim and Seung Hua left the safe zone, ignoring her warning. Turning back to the receptionist, Kim told her not to forget that he would demonstrate his skill in the game without even remembering her. The scene shifts to Yoido's business district, where the player encounters the owner of a game development company. The player refuses to follow the path he has laid out, deciding to follow his own course. Once outside, he realizes how much the world has changed. Weak monsters such as slimes have begun to appear even outside the dungeons. Portals similar to those in Chano have appeared at the train station. The player realizes that the first dungeon of Seoul Station has opened after the training. Its administrator turned out to be Neptune, a mid-level administrator. He offered the player to take the training, mentioning that it requires a team of seven people. The administrator received a notification that two had already entered the dungeon and urged the player to find four more companions. He emphasized the need to increase the team for safe passage. A table appeared on the administrator's screen, showing that the dungeon would collapse if it was not defended in time, allowing monsters to escape. Only players can clear the dungeon. In the dungeon, Kim and Seung Hua move forward cautiously. He reminds the girl to watch her step. The Soul Station dungeon resembled a cold, damp cave. Kim activated his eye of perception, carefully examining his surroundings for threats. In the first half of the journey, there were none. A status window appeared in front of Seung Hua, showing that at the age of 14, she had already reached level 15. Suddenly she noticed something in front of her. They came across a crossroads of seven paths, where each path offered different directions. Each of the seven paths led to caves where various items could be found, and that is why it is recommended to have at least seven players in the team. It turned out that when each player stood on his or her own magic circle, a path through the difficulties would open up for seven participants above level 10. Regardless of the path they chose, the risk of dying remained high since it was just the two of them. Senya watched them, sharing their fears and reflections. Kim, gathering his courage, asked Xiong Hua to wait and went ahead, promising to return quickly. Approaching the circle drawn on the floor, he stepped on it, activating the first path of the dungeon, the path of Nefaris. The player realized that if he was here, then there must be another path for his fellow player somewhere nearby. At Seoul Station, there was a fork in the road with seven paths, each of which had to be cleared to get through the dungeon. The main problem was that all seven rewards were important for complete clearing. When the player entered one of the paths, 
the difficulty was automatically adjusted to seven people. Kim activated the second fork, the arc path. He used a path activation mechanism that automatically adjusts the difficulty. On the seven paths, the difficulty was adjusted for seven people. But if one path was already activated with this difficulty, the overall difficulty decreased with each subsequent activated circle, making the task a little easier. Kim realized that by activating all seven circles, the difficulty of each path would drop to level one, making the task much easier. He approached Sung Hua, explaining that the rules of the dungeon do not require that all paths be completed simultaneously. So this strategy is quite possible. They were faced with the question of whether to choose the path called Nefars, and the choice was made in favor of yes. Meanwhile, other events were unfolding on the streets where the other player was located. People were panicked, not understanding what was happening. The police started investigating the situation at Seoul Station. The player immediately thought that they were investigating the gate to the dungeon. A figure appeared in front of the police in the form of a guy with a devil's tail and red horns on his head. His skin was red and his feet did not touch the ground, as if he was floating in the air. The police shouted at him to stop and identify himself. The player recognized the person he had met in the training area. It was a mid-level administrator named Chris. It became obvious that if Chris appeared here, there must be another player nearby, because mid-level administrators do not appear without a reason. A group of policemen warns him with a tense voice that they intend to open fire, urging him not to approach. In response, Chris grabs his opponent by the collar and asks him with a challenge what he can do to counter him. Then lifting him high by the throat, Chris arrogantly asks his opponent to try something against him. At the same time, two policemen nearby frightened watch the scene idly. One of the police officers hoping to regain control warns of an imminent shooting attack if Chris does not release the hostage. But when the fire is opened, Chris creates a protective shield of his energy that deflects the bullets, causing them to ricochet. With concentration, Chris creates blood drops on his fingertips that he can manipulate. He controls these blood drops, catches the bullets flying in his direction, and directs them back toward the police. As they approach the police, the bullets begin to detonate, mercilessly taking lives one by one. For Chris, this turns into a morbid amusement. He sees people only as toys for his cruel games, enjoying their suffering. As he concludes his brutal display of power, Chris approaches a new caller, suggesting that they start a new game. The player, staring intently into Chris's eyes, ponders the answer, hesitating on how best to respond to his offer. Chris's unexpected ally turns out to be another player named Su Ju Huan standing next to him. The player is not at all surprised to meet Su Ju Huan here, as if he could sense their upcoming meeting. As he approaches, Su Ju Huan reveals that they last saw each other about a month ago at Tower D, the place where their adventures began. Not only has he not seen the player since then, but he's also encountered goblins, and he can't shake the encounter from his memory, which has clearly left an imprint. That episode, when they faced the blood-soaked monsters together, some of whom were running away and they were eager to fight, was marked by a thirst for competition. This encounter reminded us that despite some of the fear this player evokes, he undoubtedly has impressive skills. Chris notes that a player of his caliber could not help but notice the changes taking place in the world, and asks Sue's opinion on this. The changes in question are related to the increasing number of blue portals that keep appearing and affecting reality, making it unpredictable. In the end, Sue addresses the player with a proposal. To complete the dungeon, they need to assemble a team of seven people, hinting at the difficult challenges that lie ahead. Pointing to a group of people standing behind him, Sue noted that they only had six people and offered to join them to complete the team. The conversation between the players ended, and the scene switched to the dungeon where Kim and Sung found themselves fighting against the level 12 Black Yaks. The Black Yaks are rushing forward, their strong hooves pounding the ground, creating a loud noise. Kim uses his sword with incredible skill, deftly destroying one yak after another, demonstrating his fighting skills. Their size is impressive. These are not the usual wolves that the heroes might be used to, but real monsters. Like a superhero, Kim pounces on each of the enemies with heroic courage, demonstrating phenomenal agility and strength. For each enemy he defeats, Kim gains experience that allows him to develop and become stronger. After he defeated about 30 Jacob, he was rewarded with 12 coins, which testifies to his success in battle. Impressed by his spectacular yet effective strikes, Mala asks him about his fighting technique as she has never seen such skill before. She notes that although she has met other players with excellent technique, this is the first time she has seen Kim's strikes that easily scatter enemies, demonstrating her admiration for his unique skills. The administrator overhears their conversation, and when the question of how to achieve Kim's skill comes up, she can't help but be curious. 
Kim, approaching the administrator and answering Malia at the same time, explains that due to the large number of bystanders and guards, he cannot openly share his secret. However, he encourages her to continue training, assuring her that perseverance will definitely pay off. The administrator, watching the scene, is impressed by Kim's skill and Mala's interest. Mala asks if the secret is just practice, and Kim answers in the affirmative. He emphasizes the importance of not regretting anything and always doing your best, because in his previous life it was easier for him because of the experience he had gained. As they talk, Mala notices a ring with a green diamond flying in the distance. Kim waited patiently for the moment when the ring came into their field of vision. After the path was cleared, Seung Hui declares that it's time to head to fork number two. Looking to the side, Mala notices a few surviving Jacobites, but is told not to kill them all. As she continues on her way, Kim warns her that they are not alone in this dungeon, hinting at unseen threats or possible allies. The scene switches to the other players, who are also traveling through the dungeon's maze. One of them remarks that the dungeon under the Soul train station is much different from the challenges they faced in the tower, in particular because of its cavernous structure, and asks Su Yu Hyun if it makes him feel nostalgic. Su Yu Hyun sadly recalls his past experience in this dungeon, which he does not associate with anything good. Back then, they lost more than a dozen comrades, and he himself was unable to defeat the monster because of his own mistakes. Another player interrupts him, emphasizing the need to move on and clear the dungeon of threats to everyone's safety. The group of seven continues on their way through the dungeon, demonstrating team spirit and mutual assistance. Suddenly, one of the participants calls on the others to pay attention to the crossroads in front of them, where there are seven different passages. They begin to look at the glowing circles placed in front of each entrance, trying to decipher their meaning. One of the players suggests taking the fork in the road number one, called the Nafarsa Path, as the most hopeful option. Meanwhile, Kim and Seonghua continue their search for artifacts and find a magical necklace with a red stone that stands out for its beauty. Taking the necklace in her hands, Kim feels that it appeared much faster than the ring, hinting at the mystery surrounding this artifact. Mala, curious, asks if they can now take the third path. Kim agrees, noticing that she is beginning to understand the importance of key items in their journey. She realizes that obtaining these items is far more important than aimlessly destroying monsters, emphasizing a strategic approach to survival. Xionghua apologizes and returns to Kim, explaining her slowness and apologizing for the delay. She recounts how, during the battle with the Yaks, when she was breaking the horn of one of them, she felt that she was falling behind, seeing how Kim easily dealt with several at once. Expressing her doubts about her own effectiveness, Seung Hua reflects that perhaps Kim could have done it alone. Kim, reassuring her, emphasizes that there is no need to talk nonsense and emphasizes the importance of each team member, including her, and leads the group down the third path. They see a fork in the road number three, which leads to Durancha Road. What he sees makes Seung Hua take a deep breath, preparing for new challenges. Purple yaks with three horns of the 14th level appear on their way, posing a new challenge to the group. But the most surprising thing is the enemy that can shoot its horns, with its eyes glowing a menacing red color, promising danger and a difficult battle. Unexpectedly, Yak's horn flies straight at Molly's head, creating a moment of tension. Concerned, Kim asks if she is hurt badly, to which she responds in the negative, demonstrating her resilience. They realize that the purple Yaks can shoot with their horns, which is an effective ranged attack, and this must be factored into their strategy. Kim puts his hand on Mala's shoulder to express his trust in her signaling her importance in this situation. Mala can't help but smile when she hears Kim call her the Big Tank, which lifts her spirits. She has to fight off the horns that are constantly flying in her direction with courage and agility. Using her hands, she skillfully parries the attacks, protecting herself and her team. Standing behind her, Kim cheers her on, noting her ability to deflect attacks better than he expected, although Mala asks him not to say this just for motivation. Mala uses the shield she received as a bonus while defending herself against the troll, effectively using it against enemy attacks. At one point, all the yaks gather together, mobilizing their full strength for a massive attack, creating a tense atmosphere of anticipation for the decisive battle. They let out their horns in the direction of the girl. She had to defend herself as best she could. Speed, reflexes, everything made her thirsty for victory. But at one point, she noticed something strange. Her attention was drawn to some unusual element in the middle of the battle. Perhaps it was a key detail that would help her win. All the monsters were lying on the floor, dead. It was an unexpected turn of events. Why were they falling so fast? Was it part of the enemy's strategy? Purple dies when two horns are fired, Kim explained to her. This was important information. Her fate in the game depended on it. And then the right thing appeared. The bracelet. She felt that it was something important, so she took it without hesitation. 
Kim came up to her and took the bracelet in his hand. There were only four items left. This find could change the course of the game. The girl showed her interest in the survey. Maybe we should fight a few more yaks, she suggested. But Kim advised against it, reminding her that other players might show up. Meanwhile, on the other side of the court, other players are fighting their enemies. One of them shouts for help, emphasizing the complexity of the situation. Sue decided to take the initiative and attacked the yak. His punch right in the beard was impressive. The other players were impressed by the blow, realizing that this fighter had a higher level of skill. One of them took the horn, feeling its weight. They realized that horns were valuable loot. They had found a weakness thanks to the corpses. But they realized that the horns brought little pole and left it. They turned to Sue, asking what he thought. Sue agreed that they had not found anything of value. Even defeating all the yaks hadn't given them anything of value, which was strange. There was no point in staying. They chose the second road, hoping for the best. On this road they were met by black yaks, as well as many corpses without horns, which looked strange. They realized that this was a very unusual situation. They had two options. Either they took the reward to them. Jeeb Vyukub expect them further ahead. However, it was unlikely that they were the only group to enter the dungeon. However, it's hard to imagine that anyone could have cleared the dungeon faster than Su Yu Hyun, who was with them. He thought that someone was ahead of him and already halfway through. He turned to the players with a suggestion. Let's try another way, that was plan B. He took the dagger and was ready to continue on his way, thinking about the possible omission. At the fork in the road number six, a Victoria shield was waiting for them. Kim and Sung eliminated them one by one. After killing the yaks, a window with the words pole appeared in front of him, and Victoria's shield shone yellow. He thought about giving this shield to the girl he now called his tank because of her character, but the shield was too fragile to use as real armor. Soon new awards appeared. Athena's necklaces from the fourth fork and Zenith's club from the fifth. The text, and Victoria's shield from fork six inches can be shortened to Victoria's shield from fork six. She felt tired, realizing that they had traveled a difficult path and defeated numerous monsters, with only one last important item left on their journey. Kim suggested that they continue on their way to clear the dungeon as much as possible, and everything looked pretty good. It was their last journey. Suddenly the girl looked up in surprise. Among the group of players was Su Yu Hyun. Kim expected them to be caught up, but it happened much later than he expected. He assumed that the newcomers had caught up with them. Arriving at the place, Kim immediately recognized them. It was the same group that had followed them. Kim was particularly shocked by the revelation. Su Yu Hyun, who was connected to these people, was standing in front of him. Each of those present was waiting for this meeting, as if it was foreseen by fate. With smiles on their faces, Kim and Song Hwa greeted their acquaintances, filling the moment with warmth. The boy in the coat approached Kim, wondering if they were new friends on this adventure. He noted that they managed to get through the monsters that Kim and Sung Hwa had defeated, much to their surprise. Kim, who went back ten years, looked much younger. Later, he will become a key figure, founding an organization of evil players under the terrible name Nightmare. The Demon King's army they had formed had enough strength to dominate the competitors, including the eight heroes. The evil they spread often went beyond what was described, and the infamous ringleaders were always at the forefront. Seo Juhuan VDJ, a self-proclaimed leader and maniac known for his unparalleled malice VDJ, turned out to be the guy in the coat. Kim didn't doubt at all that he would meet them, but he didn't expect it to happen so soon. Seo, with surprise in his voice, asked Kim if the two of them had really cleared the area. He expressed admiration for the work of Kim and the girl, calling their activity excellent, and suggested that they unite, because they made an excellent team. Seo offered to clear the dungeon together, promising a fair share of the rewards, which only emphasized their bond. Kim, understanding how to manipulate the situation, agreed, but put forward a condition. The key item from the seventh path must remain with him. So's team accepted his terms without objection. The sign of approval sounded unanimous. Entering fork number seven, the Lakatula Road, they mercilessly destroyed the enemies in their path as they continued their march. Moving as a team, they took down opponents with ease, showing impressive timing and agility. Song Hua watched the events closely, noticing that they were doing much faster together. But something was not as usual. She noticed that Kim was moving slower than usual. His actions were not as decisive as before. Instead of his usual ease, he seemed tired. SEO watched Kim with interest, trying to figure out what trump cards he was hiding. Because Kim was clearing the way so quickly that, even with his tiredness, his skills seemed extraordinary. After fighting through the crowd of enemies, our heroes finally reached Lakin's earrings. SEO, holding the earrings in his hands, activated the item status window to check their properties. Finding nothing unusual about the earrings, 
he was surprised when Kim came over, took them and asked if they were normal earrings, to which Kim replied that they were key to the quest. Kim openly revealed that the earrings were needed to complete a quest that was only available to first-time players of the dungeon, and that by collecting seven items, he would be able to complete the quest. When Kim handed over the earrings to So, he immediately transferred 500 coins to his account, which greatly surprised the young man, because such an amount could only be obtained with a large number of victories. This made Seo smile and think that fooling Kim would be easier than he expected. Seo stated that he would do his best to help pass the dungeon, to which Kim replied with a smile, agreeing to the offer to go deeper and complete the quest. Concerned, Song Hua asks Kim about his condition, noticing his tiredness, to which he brushes it off, assuring him that everything is fine. As an ordinary 21-year-old level 16 player, Seo Ju Huan had no unique abilities or titles, but his vicious and violent nature made him a dangerous opponent. Kim had an advantage. With his force perception eye he could see So's heinous intentions. He knew that Seo would not be able to hide his rotten essence for long. After overcoming all the challenges, Kim finally reached his goal, Mandra Square, which was open only to those who had passed all seven paths. A huge blue man carved from stone appeared before him. It was a stone statue of Mandra. When she saw Kim, she revived. Her eyes shone and turning to him asked, Who dared to wake me up? So and his team were shocked to see the statue speak warning that only the worthy could remain, while others who failed the test would be punished. Kim, standing in front of the statue, boldly replied that he was ready to prove his worth. The statue demanded proof of worthiness, putting Kim in front of a difficult test. The test began, which was supposed to reveal whether Kim was worthy of this honor. Failure promised dire consequences. In case of defeat, the subject's heart could be destroyed. The stakes were extremely high. Beginning the first part of the challenges, Kim opened his inventory and handed over all the key items to the statue, ready for the challenge. Kim started with Nafar's ring, giving it away first. Everything he had, Kim gave without a trace. Each piece of jewelry Kim acquired seemed to come to life as she dressed the statue. Nafar's ring fit perfectly on the statue's finger, as if it had been made just for her. After all the decorations were on the statue, she leaned over to Kim, asking his name after successfully completing the exam. Kim gathered all his concentration as he stood in front of the giant statue, realizing that this moment was the key to his adventure. He knew that mistakes are unacceptable here. Kim remembered the story of the man who told about passing the Place of Despair and Sewell Station. He said that Mandra translated from the local language means ranch. That is, the statue of Mandra is the guardian of the ranch. Kim realized that his task was quite simple. He found himself at the crossroads of seven roads, next to a pasture where, according to legend, the owner of the ranch hid something important in the dungeon, and the guard was waiting for his return. The last thing Kim remembered from the man in class was a warning. There is a secret reward hidden in the dungeon, so it's better not to introduce yourself by your real name. After collecting all the facts, Kim stood in front of Mandra and declared, I am your master, the one who gave you a new life, and introduced himself as a rancher. So's team, standing nearby, listened intently, not understanding what the rancher and the owner were up to. Kim found the key to the riddle by completing a mysterious task. The statue bowed to him, greeting the master. Everyone present was shocked by the event, but Song Hua could not contain her joy at what she witnessed. The statue continued, Here are the items you entrusted me with. Please choose one. Among the hidden rewards were Mandra's Karasso, Mandra's Greatsword, or Mandra's Gauntlets. SEO approached Kim, congratulating him on the reward, but curiously asked why the reward hadn't appeared yet. We'll have to wait, Kim replied. Stepping back, Seo said, You can continue without me, I won't disturb you. At that moment, Kim activated his Eye of Perception ability to find out what So was thinking. Kim read his mind, revealing the true nature of Seo, who revealed his intentions towards Sung Hua when he thought Kim couldn't see. Mandra's gloves appeared in front of Kim, a reward for successfully completing the quest. After completing the Mandra Square quest, Kim received gloves that have a unique property of resistance to poisons and protect the wearer from numerous infections. The next challenge was called Two Ways. This is the last intersection before the Sewell Station, where Kim needs to find a way to pass to avoid the danger of a dungeon breakthrough. The quest requires at least one player on each path. Besides Sung Hua, Kim urged her to stay alert and stay away from him. So intervened, urging them to stop. Approached, he expressed his frustration that he believed Kim did not see him and his friends as equals on the team, and suggested splitting the group up. Kim agreed, but decided that he and Song Hua would form a separate team to clear one of the paths. Seo replied with a smile, stressing that confidence in an unfamiliar place is a good thing, 
but things can end badly. Acknowledging the logic in So's words, Kim asked what he suggested next. So suggested thinking about creating balanced groups, in their case two teams, one of three, the other of four. Seo pointed out that the potential lack of strength in the three-man group could be compensated by Yu Hyun, who had undergone specialized training. Most surprising was Seo's proposal to appoint Kim as the leader of the three-member group and Song Hua to be added to the four-person group, effectively proposing to separate Kim and Song Hua. Kim hugged Song Hua tightly and responded confidently to Seo's proposal. His calm smile changed to a serious expression as he declared his lack of any desire to accept such a proposal. Seo tried to find out the reasons for Kim's refusal, but he did not make excuses, calling Xiong Hua his younger sister and declaring that he will not let her go until they go through the dungeons together. The administrator, watching this scene, was shocked by the events. With his eye of perception ability, Kim penetrated into So's thoughts, trying to decipher them. Kim received word that some of the guardians were interested in the source of his knowledge, but in his mind, he was criticizing them for their lack of initiative in providing information. As a result, everyone agreed with Kim's determination and decided not to take Song Hua with him in the split group. Kim convinces Yu Hyun to go with them, assuring him that everything will be fine if they split into said groups. Kim and the girl didn't have the ability to revive, but they readily agreed to take Yu Hyun on their team. They decided to meet after they had each cleared their own path. So, not hiding his mischievousness, wished them luck, a sly smile never leaving his face. A road opened before Kim's team at the end of which they found a clue that could help them in the sweep. Since there were less than five people in the dungeon, a temporary safe zone was automatically activated for them. Kim's thoughts on what to do next were interrupted by a question. Is that really you? Are you the same one who fought the troll on the second floor of the tower? I might not have recognized you the first time, but you were always with that child, said the young man. Kim admitted that the boy was right, but asked why he mentioned it. The boy bowed his head and answered that he wanted to thank Kim for saving him. Kim and the girl listened to him carefully, without interfering in the conversation. Raising his head a little, the young man admitted that for him Kim is a real hero, because without his help, he might not be alive. The fact that Kim saved the young man's life was true, when in fact Kim was acting on instinct, trying to run away for his own survival. A status window appeared in front of the player, indicating the favor, respect, admiration, and gratitude he felt for Kim. Reading these lines in his status, Kim realized that the young man was telling the pure truth. He could never have thought that he would deserve such gratitude, almost as a favor of the King of Fists. It seemed incredible to him. In the world of players, especially respected and strong people were called Hennick. The young man asked Kim if he could call him that. The girl, standing next to him, rejoiced, seeing how her friend received such a high assessment of his merits. Their conversation was coming to an end, and they continued on their way forward. At one point, Kim announced that they had finally achieved their goal. A crystal appeared in front of them, necessary for clearing the dungeon. Kim invited the boy and girl to sit down and rest while he approached the crystal himself. You can relax right here, he said, adding that they have a difficult task ahead of them that will require a lot of time and effort. They decided to rest, realizing that they needed to gather strength before attacking. While resting, the girl remembered Kim's words that she was allegedly his younger sister, and wondered how she should address him now. I'll call you Opa, she said. Kim was somewhat unaccustomed to such an address, but he accepted it with a smile. The girl decided to call the boy a Jossie. Kim poured the tea and handed her a cup so she could drink and feel the warmth. Sitting on the floor, Kim explained to them that clearing the crystal was directly related to clearing the entire dungeon. This will be the final battle, where numerous traps may await them. He emphasized that many challenges await them ahead. During the tea party, a notification appeared that other players had joined them, and the number exceeded five people so the temporary safe zone was deactivated. Realizing who it might be, Kim called for everyone to get up. They had to prepare for a battle with the new arrivals. Seo appeared with a mocking smile, asking if they had cleared the area yet. His smile, as usual, caused rejection. The girl and the boy were ready for the parking lot, but they did not expect such a turn of events. This unexpected challenge surprised them. Kim was already waiting for their arrival, knowing that Seo, that scoundrel, would definitely show up. He was certain of So's intentions to thwart their plans. Such a devious move was characteristic of him. Seo, leaping forward, tries to strike Kim with his sword, only to be met with resistance by his own weapon. You should be a little more modest, knowing about my appearance, Seo Kimu sneered. But Kim was not so sure of his victory to risk everything on one card. Seo attacks Kim again, swinging his sword with all his might. Their weapons clashed in the air, sparks flying in all directions. So shows impressive confidence and skill in combat. For now, Kim is only focused on defense, 
Parrying blows and avoiding direct attacks, he understands that it is time to gather his thoughts and give a worthy rebuff to his opponent. Losing in this battle is not part of his plans because important goals are at stake, and he cannot leave a little girl unprotected. The girl and the boy stood nearby, actively supporting Kim, urging him to be more careful in battle. Suddenly, one of So's team members jumped towards them, launching a sword attack. This enemy, despite his training, did not expect to find behind his back a little girl, whom he is now obliged to protect. They are offered to spare their lives in exchange for the girl's handover, threatening that their team outmatches him, especially when Kim is engrossed in the duel with So. Kim, holding his sword at the ready in front of So, found himself cornered. So was bored by Kim's monotonous defense, which did not attempt to counterattack. Seo came closer, stating that in a battle against monsters they may be equal, but in a fight against other players, Kim is worthless. A message appeared in front of Kim. The whispering devil enjoys the insults hurled at him. Kim found a way to counter the players by reaching for his thermos that was on the ground. At this time, So was alert, holding his sword tightly, ready to fend off any attack. Seo believed that Kim was only pretending to impress him. Kim decided to ask one last question. Will Seo kill them if he doesn't give Sung Hwa back? Maybe earlier I would have let you go, but now, now I will kill you, So replied, instantly charging at Kim with his sword. But Kim was faster, hitting Seo right in the stomach with a thermos. Blood gushed from So's mouth from such a strong blow. Meanwhile, the boy and Song Hua, watching the scene, found themselves in a state of shock. Here is the result of your decisions, Kim said coldly as he struck. Earlier, Seo had asked his team to stop this farcical performance. In front of his group, he announced his intention to take off the head of that scoundrel Kim. Seo laid out a plan for his team as to how they would do this, urging them to hold the girl and boy while he himself faced Kim in battle. He was convinced that Kim, this pathetic scoundrel, would not be able to oppose anything, no matter how capable he thought he was. The battle took a new turn when So found himself in an unexpected situation. Sensing that Kim's power had increased significantly, Seo realized that he would now have to change his tactics. One of Seo's followers tried to attack the girl, but his attempt was doomed to failure. She activated the Platinum Shield skill, stopping his sword with ease. With the sword blocked, her new ally was able to deliver a powerful punch. Using the skill Mighty Fist, he punched the aggressor directly in the chest, making him feel the full force of the blow. The enemy team was confused, switching to archery to avoid melee. Between Kim and So, completely different conditions of battle have developed. Now the initiative has passed to Kim. With each strike, Kim picked up the trajectory of the attack, feeling in control of the battle. Guo Zhang, one of So's best archers, failed to impress the girl and her companions as he tried in vain to hit his targets. He was the key figure responsible for all of their group's surprise attacks. Aiming directly at Kim, Seo ordered him eliminated, deeming him even more dangerous than Zhu Huan due to his ability to attack from a distance. But he faced a problem. He needed a defender to shoot effectively. Iron Fist appeared behind him, giving the archer a shock when he saw it so close. In the back, Iron Fist menacingly reminded him of protecting the little girl calling his opponents bastards. Holding the bow, the archer begged not to approach, but Iron Fist was already ready for action, rolling up his sleeves. Cold sweat was already on So's face. The King of Fists became even stronger, Kim realized as he looked back and saw the archer lying unconscious. Seo was amazed at how quickly their plan failed, when they should have won. Looking directly at Kim, he realized that he was not that experienced, but looked like his abilities were no higher than level 10. So knew he had to calm down and find an opportunity to counterattack while remaining confident in his skills. However, Kim was in no rush to attack. Instead, he doused So with the liquid from his thermos. So couldn't figure out what kind of water it was, which was at room temperature. Now it became clear why Kim was holding the thermos in his hands. Si thought that Kim was just mocking him. But it was not a mockery. Kim asked him to look around. Turning around, So saw a giant hornet's leg sticking out from behind the wall. In front of them was a flock of giant hornets that broke through the wall and broke free from their hive, being the size of a man. They needed to organize protection immediately, because all those who remained alive were in danger. The hornet's sting could pierce through the human chest, and their bites were so painful that it was almost impossible to endure them. Trying to gather all his strength, Seo tried to fight off the onslaught of hornets, while Kim, pouring honey water over him, just watched. For the hornets, this was a sufficient reason to attack. Kim was aware of a raiding episode occurring on two tracks known as the Hornet Attack. Despite the catchy name, they weren't all that easy to deal with given their individual level of around 18, especially when they attack in a pack. Kim ordered his team to lie on the ground to minimize the risk of being stung. 
Dropping to the floor proved to be an effective move as the hornet flew right over the girl's head, demonstrating that they don't attack low targets. The pain from one poisonous sting was indescribable and So's body was hit by three at once. Seo's face was now not as confident as before when he swung at the girl. Soon his body was lying on the floor, covered with traces of the bites of dozens of hornets. At the end of these events, Kim felt very tired from the battle. Observing So's condition, Kim could only say one thing. If you are willing to kill others, be willing to die yourself. Two system messages appeared in front of Kim, one about detecting the player's first kill after completing training, and the other about unlocking the unique ability, eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, with additional boost to attack stats, attack speed, and critical strike chance. Kim found it strange to receive a second ability, since he already had the eye of perception. This new ability was familiar to Kim. While it forced him to respond to attacks, in return, it provided buffs that aided in combat with other players. In the game world, this was a rare ability, especially valuable in PvP. Even those who take civil service exams knew about it, but it always remained hidden. Approaching from behind, one boy expressed Kim's innocence, saying he would have done the same thing, and called his enemies scoundrels unworthy of life. He thought Kim was feeling guilty, so they tried to comfort him, but Kim remained calm, feeling no remorse. It would be illogical to let go of those who seek their death as it would lead to their own demise. Therefore, Kim did not regret his decision. He told his friends that it is better to become a murderer than to wait to be killed. Two messages caught their attention. Libra Woman understands your sincere feelings and Libra Woman is considering giving you a big gift. The battle is over, now their path lies to the crystal. The dungeon was completely cleared. All that remained was to destroy the crystals on both paths. Crystal of the Soul Station was disheartened by the invasion. The Eye of Perception detected the danger. A wind rose from the crystal, portending a threat. Kim asked his comrades to retreat as he decided to deal with this threat on his own. He turned to his inventory, pulling out some hornet stingers that might come in handy. Kim was ready to face the poisonous gas that had already filled the room. Mandra's gloves, endowed with resistance to poison and protection against numerous infections, appeared in his hands, increasing his resistance to poison. Sensing that the effect of the poison had become dangerously strong, Kim realized the need to destroy the crystal as soon as possible. Meanwhile, the smoke became denser, turning the surrounding space into an impenetrable curtain. The crystal suddenly disappeared from Kim's sight, sinking into the thick fog. Kim felt the crystal's poison seeping into his body, making every breath difficult. Attempts to activate the Eye of Perception to search for the crystal warned of grave danger, but he could not stop. With no time to hesitate, Kim firmly grasped the stinger and hurried to where the crystal was supposed to be. Throwing the sting into the crystal, Kim noticed how the effect of the poison began to weaken, reducing its destructive effect. The operation proved more difficult than Kim had hoped, leaving his hand badly burned. Thanks to his decisive actions, the mission to destroy the Soul Station crystal was successfully completed, fulfilling one of the two clearing conditions. Somewhere in the shadows, an unknown observer was carefully following the events. Whispering Devil expressed his frustration when two messages appeared on Kim's screen. Kim realized that this sinister overseer wished him dead. Hornet stings obtained in the previous battle became the key to neutralizing the poison. Intrigued, the boy asked Kim how he knew about their effectiveness. Kim explained that this information was listed in the description. When asked if Kim acted blindly, hoping for the truth of the description, he answered in the affirmative. Although in fact it was a well-thought-out strategy of the famous researcher Jackson. An expression of admiration appeared in Song Hua and Iron Fist's eyes. After successfully destroying one crystal, they made sure that the second crystal would be easier for them. But suddenly, the administrator appeared. Observing Kim, the administrator realized that he had used the hornets not only to fight Ju Huan, but also to obtain poison neutralizing items. Her strategy was so obvious that it needed no further explanation. Putting on his gloves, Kim went for the second crystal and succeeded. The task of destroying the solar station crystal was completed. The dungeon was completely cleared and all entrances to it were sealed. Without waiting for the administrator's actions, she went straight to Kim. Arriving at Kim, the administrator stopped in front of him, ready to carry out what she had planned. She announced the presentation of the awards, hinting at their specialness, because she had come to hand them out in person. Bonus stat points will be awarded to all party members who completed the dungeon, she said. Kim was given the right to choose a special award. A selection window opened in front of him after a successful sweep. One possible reward was gold, which beckoned for direct enrichment, although it had few restrictions on legal use. 3.75 gold, roughly equal to 200 million won, may seem like a small amount compared to the adventures ahead. Most people would without a doubt choose gold, 
an asset they never dreamed of. However, in the early stages of the game, the rights of players were not protected by law, which forced them to give a significant part of their fines to the state. There have been cases of confiscation of gold as an item from an unknown world due to a potential threat. It was unfair, but there was nothing we could do about it. Kim would have been lucky if the government didn't confiscate the gold when he tried to exchange it, but he decided to go with the safer reward of the B-type restoration elixir. After sealing the entrance to the dungeon, a portal leading back to the real world instantly opened before them. Stepping out of the portal, they found themselves in the ordinary city streets, where everything seemed so familiar. Kim raised the issue with his sister about the possibility of moving, looking for a better life for them. The sister was confused, not understanding where Kim could get the funds. But he reassured her by saying that he had set aside about 100 million won. Perceiving this, she thought that he was joking or drunk, because such an amount seemed unreal to her. Her doubts were understandable, because 100 million won was a colossal amount that their family had never even dreamed of. The elixir that Kim chose proved to be extremely effective against a specific disease. Taking it, Kim went to meet the person, just like Seo Ju Hwan had done before in his past. This person was wealthy enough to offer a substantial sum for the elixir, and was suffering from an illness that this very remedy could cure, fitting both conditions perfectly. For this elixir, Seo Ju Hwan received approximately 1 billion won. Kim was confident that if everything went according to plan, like last time, the deal would be successful again. While watching the news on the phone, his sister saw a mention of the head of the Sonshin Corporation, who suddenly appeared with a new hairstyle. She was surprised because she had always imagined him as a bald old man, and at first thought he was wearing a wig. But in fact, his hair grew back thanks to a miracle remedy that Kim had heard about. It wasn't just a baldness treatment, but an effective hair regrowth agent. The chairman of Sonshin Corporation, the founder of a giant company from scratch, saw the potential in this and was ready to pay 100 million in cash for it. The same man, wanting to help, agreed to adopt Song Hua, whose fate was uncertain, which Kim's mother appreciated, considering the girl intelligent and cheerful. Approaching his sister again, Kim offered her a move, as he had purchased a new home for them. Thanks to this move, his family will be able to enjoy life in a better place, worrying less about everyday difficulties. The sister agreed with this idea. The portal that opened in the middle of the street witnessed a new beginning for them. At that time, Kim invited his sister to spend the evening with his mother, enjoying a family dinner. Their conversation was suddenly interrupted by the sight of a portal that appeared outside the window. This new gate opened almost immediately after the previous one had just closed. Right in front of the portal, Kim noticed a girl. It was Shin Yon Seo, standing on the threshold of new adventures. As the bus came to a smooth stop, Kim activated the emergency stop button. Turning to his sister, he hastily stated that it was necessary to urgently resolve some matter that had suddenly arisen. Nearby, in an area where peace usually prevails, a mystical gate appeared, the harbinger of the first public cleansing of the Emperor's dungeon. Information about this event remained laconic and mysterious, despite its greatness and unprecedentedness. At the gate, as if summoning fate, stood Shin Yonsu, a legendary PvP player who was the first to conquer this dungeon. Kim, approaching Shin, asked if she was going to enter the dungeon, showing his curiosity and undisguised admiration. He tried to find any information about her, but the year 2028 kept her secret. The lively and sweet atmosphere that surrounded her was in stark contrast to her reputation as a relentless killer. Suddenly, a status window appeared in front of her. Name, Shin Yon Seo, level 19, age 20. This information seemed to emphasize its unusualness and power. Up until then, no monster breakthrough had been recorded, as Kim possessed knowledge that allowed him to instantly clear the gates as soon as they appeared. In the past, the Soul Station dungeon has become the scene of bloody battles, exacting immeasurable sacrifices from players trying to figure out the strategy to clear it. But this time the situation has changed. Kim felt a sense of confusion, a premonition of future events, when there would be so many gates that it would be impossible to handle them alone, and breakthroughs would become inevitable. Kim turning to Shin again, asked if she would like to enter the dungeon, emphasizing his willingness to work together. Without hesitation, he proposed to create a group to face together the challenges that await them in the depths of the mysterious world. Shin yong Su was intrigued by the information about Kim's level, sensing him as a potential ally and warrior. With a light smile, she shared that she herself was level 19 and progressing quickly, as if inviting him to a friendly competition. Without further ado, Shin opened her editor and sent Kim a group invite officially starting their adventure together. Discussing plans next to the portal, 
Kim suggested that they continue the conversation after they made it out of the dungeon, but already alive, hinting at the dangers that lay ahead. They stepped through the gate in no time, hoping for a chance to see the legendary dungeon that the Sword Empress had once passed through, having just finished her training. Beyond the portal, Kim's sister watched them disappear together, holding out hope for their safe return. Immediately after entering the portal, they were met by monsters that emerged from the shadows, ready to fight. It turned out that they were not ordinary enemies, but monster rabbits of the 18th and 6x levels, causing surprise with their unusual appearance. Shin immediately began crafting a sword, noting that even though these monsters were big like bosses, they didn't seem too powerful at first glance. However, their power was considerable compared to the game characters. Despite their power, the rabbits did not show aggression and did not pose much of a threat, which made it possible to assess the level of danger as relatively low. The main feature of rabbits was their ability to quickly escape when danger was detected, which made them unpredictable opponents. Kim shared a strategy with Shin that it was best to kill the rabbits with one hit as soon as they felt threatened, as they would flee instantly at the slightest sign of danger. Shin confidently replied that she could handle this task, because she had a skill in her arsenal that was perfect for such a situation. Her ability to kill with one blow not only confirmed that she was a true Empress of the Sword, but also displayed exceptional skill. The rabbits didn't stand a chance against her sword. She took them down one by one with ease, masterfully using her skill. Kim watched her unique technique with admiration, surprised at her quick mastery and efficiency in using the skill in battle. The atmosphere of the battle has changed dramatically. Just a moment ago, Shin looked like an ordinary student, but now she has transformed into a fearless warrior, ruthlessly defeating her enemies. Her transformation reminded Kim of the warrior she could become in 10 years v. DJ full of dedication to battle and a desire to win. Kim didn't stand back either and joined the fight, surprised to have to face the rabbits right here on the other side of the portal. Despite their high speed, the rabbits had weak attack and defense, making them vulnerable to experienced warriors like Kim and Shin. After all the rabbits were defeated, Kim hoped for luck in obtaining a rare item that could dramatically change the course of the game. However, as if by order, new monsters began to jump out of the portal, forcing the heroes to prepare for a new battle. Among the loot that rabbits could leave was a special item capable of helping the character level by 30, 40, which was necessary for further progress. Kim understood that it would be unwise to wait for this item to drop from a couple of killed monsters, so he spared no effort in destroying the enemies one by one. He was determined not to leave the dungeon without receiving this valuable item. Senya, Kim's sister, watched the battle from a safe distance, closely following her brother's actions. Suddenly, behind her, a voice rang out, commenting on the events in surprise. An incredible player! It seems to be Kim Hyuk Jin! A fairy flew up to her and asked if Senya was broadcasting this exciting event. The fairy offered to look at Kim's status to better understand who they were dealing with. However, access to Kim's status was blocked and they failed to get the desired information only adding intrigue to his identity. Sinya explained to the fairy that Kim had adjusted the permissions to view personal information, so that he not only closed access to his status, but also removed his name from the player rating table. The fairy asked with surprise how she knew about this, and whether Senya had told anyone else about it. Senya replied that of course not, she did not break any rules. Senya was surprised at Kim's ability to use the system to hide information so skillfully concluding that he was a master of brainstorming and could use anyone who would act recklessly. Realizing that Kim could bring in considerable income, the fairy expressed a desire to broadcast his activities as well, approaching Senya with such an offer. Senya replied that this is also impossible, because she signed an exclusive contract with Kim. At that time, Kim continued to defeat monsters, gaining experience and coins. After the next kill of the rabbit, a message about receiving the item appeared on the screen. This object turned out to be a well-made iron sword created by an ordinary craftsman. Kim took the sword in his hands and throwing it to the girl, asked her to use this sword as it was better than her own. She gladly accepted it, grateful for such a valuable gift. After she happily accepted the sword, she promised that the next valuable item would definitely go to Kim, and with new strength rushed into battle with the rabbits. Kim, meanwhile, watched her actions with interest. Kim had a general idea of VDJ, VGJJ, the monsters that would appear in this world in 10 years, so he was aware that his current weapons were quite sufficient for the current challenges and gave the quality iron sword without any doubt. After defeating the next monster, a window appeared on the screen with a message about the received item. Kim gladly accepted the item, feeling that luck had finally smiled upon him. He realized that this was the best reward he could ever get from this dungeon, which greatly boosted his morale. The object turned out to be Legolas's ring, created by mystical fusion. Thanks to its magical power, 
It could absorb the health of enemies, making it an indispensable asset in battle. Glancing back, Kim spotted the cleansing crystal, the key to completing the dungeon level. He was surprised by the quick appearance of crystal. He didn't expect it to happen so soon. But they decided it was better to focus on the battle with the rabbits for now instead of rushing things with crystal. After receiving the ring, Kim realized that it was the only piece of equipment that could be used without restriction. But with every moment, even more rabbit monsters appeared around, emphasizing the need to continue the fight. Realizing that he still had ten fingers left without rings, Kim decided it was too soon to stop. So with a renewed zeal he charged into the battle, continuing to kill the rabbits. She also actively joined the fight, expertly wielding the sword Kim had given her and killing rabbits with the same ease and speed as him. As she watched Kim, she realized that he not only had a vast knowledge of civilization, but was also extremely intelligent. She became more and more interested in finding out who he really was. She relentlessly continued to destroy one rabbit after another, tirelessly pursuing her goal. However, suddenly, the monsters stopped appearing, leaving them in the silence and relative peace of the dungeon. She reflected that they might be able to get out of the dungeon if they killed enough rabbits. After several hours of intense fighting, she turned to Kim with a question about what to do next. He pointed to the exit on the other side, suggesting that they go there. However, when they approached, they found that there was no way out, but a cleansing crystal that had already been destroyed, indicating that the dungeon had been cleared. It turned out that this dungeon was different from the usual ones. These gates could not be re-entered after they were closed, which added to their uniqueness. By that time, Kim managed to collect eight rings. The administrator, watching Kim, could not hide her excitement. Her trembling wings showed her emotions. Boredom prevailed among the observers, but Kim fascinated them, making their existence more interesting. After spending a lot of time in the dungeon, the heroes decided that it was time to go home and headed for the portal. As they exited the portal, they found a strange desolation around them. There were no people anywhere, even though it was the same portal they had entered through. Suddenly, a fairy appeared in front of them, welcoming them back. Fairy has announced that the true master of Heavenly Demonic Mountain has decided to open up the PvP area, so she happily announces that the area is now available for competition. ROA, that was the name of this fairy administrator who broadcasted the events just like Senya, but she was a fairy, not a person. The fairy introduced the heroes to the audience and asked who would win in this PvP zone. In the PvP zone, it is impossible to die. All injuries received will be virtual, so the fairy called on the audience to vote for the player they believe in, announcing it live. The heroes listened to the fairy carefully, concentrating on her every word. ROA possessed a unique ability to command the audience's attention, thanks to which she became one of the most popular middle-ranking administrators, skillfully engaging the audience in the events of the virtual world. The girl turned to Kim, admitting that she herself did not understand why the situation had developed as it did. Kim was a bit shocked, not expecting to have to fight in PvP, especially when they were both without the support of their guardians. The reactions of the observers varied, from the bewilderment of the administrator conducting the broadcast, to the surprise of the whispering devil and the snort of the brave Lion King. The fairy announced that the battle could be started by giving the signal for action. However, Kim stated that they had to agree on some rules before the fight began, after which he approached the girl to discuss them. Kim expressed his desire to convey the words of the master of the heavenly demonic mountain that such contests lead to treason, forcing them to fight the one with whom they had gone through the trials side by side. His words reflected frustration at a system that fostered betrayal among allies, and his own name hinted at a large number of followers and ambitions to become a guardian in the future despite his bellicose and maniacal nature. The fairy, hearing his words, became thoughtful, thinking about Kim's arrogance and his confidence in his own abilities. For his courage and willingness to stand up against injustice, Kim received the one-hit kill skill, which became decisive for him in further competitions. Changes in the status of Shin Yonso, who had long had this skill and was far superior to Kim, made him wonder about his chances of winning, even if he wasn't sure of his ability to win. The girl, having accepted the challenge, said with interest that she was interested to know who would win in this duel. Kim, handing her the sword, said that she would be able to use it better, but his motives were deeper than simple kindness. She noticed that Kim was an extraordinary warrior who was able to merge with monsters on the battlefield, displaying incredible speed and skill comparable to her own. In addition, Kim had a deep knowledge of the inner structure of the portal and the secrets behind it, which he demonstrated by helping her find her way out of the dark labyrinth. She was intrigued by how far Kim could go if he fought seriously, so she defiantly positioned her sword in front of him, ready for a duel. 
Now that they both had the same skill set, it was the perfect time to test them head to head. Kim agreed to this inspection, recognizing its importance to both. The onlookers, including the guardians, eagerly awaited the start of the duel. The brave Lion King called for a quick start, while the heavenly demonic mountain True Master preferred silent observation. Without delay, the girl was the first to attack Kim, showing her determination and fighting spirit. The duel between Kim and the girl began with unexpected intensity, leaving the question of whether he could defeat her in this fight. As their swords clashed in a direct duel, Kim and the girl's eyes met in close contact, and at that moment, Kim activated his ability, the power of perception. These eyes of perception allowed Kim to anticipate her movements and attacks, as if he could read her thoughts and intentions ahead of time. Thanks to this, it became increasingly difficult for the girl to find a moment for a counterattack, because Kim anticipated her every move. In such a situation, Kim decided that there was only one option left, which he carefully considered. During the battle, Kim asked her to attack him in earnest, trying to provoke her into a full attack so that their powers were even. When she lunged at him with determination, Kim parried her attack with great skill. Undeterred, she attacked again, trying to land another stronger blow. But Kim had another plan. He positioned himself so that the tree was behind him, using it as a strategic element in his defense. She swung at Kim with all her might, trying to end the duel with one decisive blow. Her sword whizzed through the air and stuck in the tree with a loud thud, leaving her without her main means of attack. Turning around, she saw Kim maneuvering deftly, amazed at how skillfully he concealed his speed until the last moment. His movements were so fast that they were barely visible to the eyes, creating the illusion of instantaneous movement. The girl found herself in a hopeless situation when Kim's sword was already at her neck, as if inviting her to surrender. She sat on the floor, restricted in her movements by Kim's sword, which held her firmly under control. In the end, she honestly conceded defeat to Kim, announcing his victory. With this victory, Kim became the first winner to be awarded a triumph in his first PvP match. The movement technique used by Kim, which did not require the expenditure of mana, resembled the legendary techniques possessed by the Empress of the Sword, whose accomplishments were filled with chronicles. All the observers who followed the duel were deeply impressed by Kim's victory, which raised his reputation in their eyes. After the PvP battle was over, the zone was turned off, putting an end to this intense and show-stopping showdown. During the fight, Kim received a minor wound from the girl, which thankfully healed quickly after the PvP zone was closed, showing not only the intensity of their duel, but also the magical properties of the zone. The girl, not wanting to part so quickly, made an unexpected proposal. She held out her phone to Kim, offering to enter her number and add her to her contacts, admitting that she liked him. Such directness surprised Kim. He did not expect such a turn of events after their meeting. Kim accepted her offer, saving her number in his phone. As he saved the number, his eyes of perception detected danger approaching from behind, as if an invisible blow was about to strike him in the neck. But it turned out to be only the hand of his sister who decided to intervene. Kim could not avoid this blow, accepting it with all the seriousness of the situation. His sister appeared behind him, loudly shouting his name, showing her displeasure. She was furious, accusing Kim of irresponsibility as he, she said, disappeared in the middle of nowhere, leaving her to search for him without any explanation, again underscoring their close bond and emotional interaction. When the girl asked who it was, Kim answered that it was his sister, revealing part of his personal life to her. The plot takes us to the future, where Kim finds himself in the city from which they were soon to leave to collect things. There were only three days left before departure, after which his family could count on a more comfortable life. Kim's sister and mom couldn't believe the move was finally happening. Kim managed to organize everything so that he gave his family a chance for happiness. However, subsequent events unfolded according to Kim's recollection. On May 11, 2018, a catastrophe began affecting training zones around the world, killing about 20 million people. The main conglomerate Sonshin has announced new artifacts related to the gaming theme, saying that all efforts and resources will be directed to the development of this industry. Events were unfolding according to Kim's records, and if nothing changed, on June 16th, three days from now, dungeons and portals would begin to appear across the country. Kim knew about it, but he couldn't solve all the problems on his own. He didn't think of himself as a hero or a saint, but as an ordinary player he could only do what he did best, play every day. After opening the game record book, Kim found an entry dated June 13th, 2018 about the killing at Mount Ivinson where six people were killed on the mountain trail by an unknown killer. It was this game that he chose for his next mission. Kim and Songhua moved to the mountains to complete their mission. Their goal was to find and tame a monster that was hiding somewhere nearby, 
which presented them with a new challenge and adventure in a dangerous but exciting game world. There were tourists on the mountain who watched the slimes with interest, considering them too weak to call them real monsters. Kim informed the girl that their goal was to find a lycanthrope, revealing the true purpose of their search in the mountains. The group of tourists continued their route along mountain paths, enjoying the singing of birds and the beauty of the surrounding nature. Among themselves, they discussed the events that had taken place in Zhongyo, and how similar phenomena had now begun to occur all over the world, including the appearance of monsters. The conversations also touched on middle-ranking administrators who were rumored to be killing people, adding a disturbing note to their adventure. Suddenly, next to the tourists, something elusive flashed quickly, catching them by surprise and forcing them to freeze in place. Turning around, they noticed someone who appeared out of nowhere. It was Kim running up to them. He focused his attention on a group of women, about 50 years old, who were standing on the mountainside. Realizing that there might be a woman among them, a potential victim of the incident he recorded, Kim felt the need to proceed with caution. Stopping in front of them and with Song Hua behind him, Kim reassured the tourists, asking them not to panic and to remain calm, trying to avoid any conflict or misunderstanding. Despite Kim's efforts to calm the tourists down, their screams only grew louder, causing even more panic among those present. A 24 thief level lycanthrope, attracted by the noise and chaos, arrived at the scene from the loud screams. People in panic began to run in different directions, trying to escape from danger. One of the women fell to the ground, unable to keep her balance in her haste to escape. Kim, determined to face the lycanthrope, prepared for his first fight without gimmicks, feeling a strong desire to win. But Kim realized that the source of the danger might not be one, hinting that they might be dealing with more than one lycanthrope. The lycanthrope made a swift leap, attempting to attack Kim from the air. This monster looked scary, but a shadow appeared behind it, adding to the mystique of the situation. Kim showed agility, successfully dodging the attacks of the lycanthrope that jumped at him. Using his quick movement skill, Kim was able to avoid a direct encounter with the monster, showing his superior fighting skill and intuition in battle. During the fight, Kim changed his title to Excellent Player, gaining an effect that increased the damage done to the lycanthrope. He masterfully used the skill Magnificent Strike to deliver a powerful sword blow directly to the monster's stomach. However, the situation was complicated by the appearance of a level 27 six-tailed fox, which appeared unexpectedly and much earlier than Kim expected. This monster was very strong and belonged to the spirit category VDJ, a cunning animal that used disguise to perform surprise attacks and magic. One of the tourists lost his arm, which flew off due to the impact, causing him to scream loudly in pain. It turned out that the lycanthrope was responsible for pulling the tourist's hand away, adding to the horror of the situation. Kim's attention was distracted by Song Hua, who used the power of provocation, trying to get the monster's attention. This was not the first time she had faced this monster, and Kim decided to stay close, ready to help. Remembering the techniques and tricks Kim used against her, Song Hua tried to use them against the fox. Despite having an abnormal status that didn't have much of an effect, Song Hua was able to deal with the monster, showing off her combat prowess and adaptability in battle. Xiong Hua, transformed into a true hunter, concentrated as she prepared to hit the lycanthrope right in the face with the full force of her charged fist. However, the lycanthrope proved to be more agile and attacked first, forcing Song Hua to use a platinum shield to defend against his attack. Not only did she withstand the pressure of the attack, but she also decided to counterattack aggressively, grabbing the monster's arm, preventing it from escaping. Despite the lycanthrope's considerable strength as he tried to strike her with his free hand, Song Hua held him in her grip. At this critical moment, Kim appeared, who came to the rescue and effectively saved Song Hua, piercing the lycanthrope's head with his sword. With her sword stuck in the monster's mouth, Song Hua used the moment for a final blow, striking the lycanthrope right in the chest with her iron gauntlet. This coordinated and decisive blow was decisive. The lycanthrope was defeated, and it was Song Hua who delivered the final blow. For defeating the lycanthrope, Song Hua received experience and plus 30 coins as a reward. However, their task could have been accomplished much more easily if not for the unexpected appearance of a six-tailed fox that added to the challenges. Realizing the difficulty of the situation, Kim turned his gaze to the tourists, who were sitting on the ground terrified, trying to decide how best to protect them from further dangers. The tourists mistook Kim for a monster and begged him not to approach them, making the situation even more difficult. Due to the sudden appearance of a powerful monster, Kim was unable to escape or protect all victims from danger. Faced with a situation where he couldn't help everyone, Kim whispered, Rest in peace, understanding the tragedy of the moment. The real killer remained the six-tailed fox, which could not be stopped due to the limitation of the current level of development, which did not allow catching spirit monsters. 
the fox turned out to be very cunning, skillfully choosing moments to escape, so Kim carefully scanned the forest, hoping to find him. Suddenly, Kim heard a shout from one of the tourists, indicating a new threat. A six-tailed fox appeared in front of him, trying to get closer to his potential prey. Kim, armed with a sword that was still smeared with the blood of the lycanthrope, rushed at the fox, which craved human flesh to heal its wounds. The monster was particularly interested in human internal organs that could help him recover. Kim jumped out and stood in front of the tourist, protecting him from the fox, keeping his sword at the ready and ready to fight the wily enemy. Analyzing the behavior of the monster, Kim realized that he had only a doppelganger technique in front of him. Because if it was a real fox, the tourist lying next to him would have long ago become its victim. Kim wondered where the real fox might be. Suddenly, a gigantic monster appeared in front of them, and by its size and presence, Kim immediately understood that it was a real fox. The real fox stood between the trees watching Kim's actions, unaware that thanks to the eyes of perception, Kim was able to follow him. Kim asked Song Hua to provoke the fox, to which she responded with a swift attack on the monster. Song Hua successfully attracted the fox's attention, forcing him to return to her. However, her attempt to completely distract the fox was not successful the first time. The monster continued to keep them both in sight. Song Hua returned to Kim for further instructions. Kim urged her not to give up and to keep trying, asking her to trust him because he had a plan. When the fox's claws landed on Xiong Hua's face, it confirmed that they were not an illusion, but a real being. Showing courage and resourcefulness, Song Hua stuck her hand right into the mouth of the 22nd level fox and grabbed his throat. The weak fox clone couldn't break through Xiong Hua's defenses. Kim tried to impress him, but realized that the real challenge was fighting the original, who, impressed by their bravery and skill, decided to run away. An item selection window opened in front of Kim, where the novice dagger caught his eye as the perfect tool for the challenges ahead. Kim purchased this dagger for 260 coins, seeing it as an investment in his future as a warrior. The only way to attack a fast fox was to throw the dagger a long distance, hoping to hit it as it fled. Kim threw the dagger with such force that it instantly flew in the direction of the fox, showing Kim's immense skill and strength. When the dagger hit the real fox, the clone Xiong Hua was fighting disappeared as it was only an illusion. The real six-tailed fox was on the ground with a dagger in its chest. Kim managed to hit it right on target despite the monster's rapid movement across the rocks. Kim moved in to deliver the final blow and plunged his sword straight into the fox's heart, ending his ominous existence. For defeating the fox, Kim received a unique item, a fox tail, which, although it had a small chance of falling, will come in handy in future dungeons. Kim heard words of congratulations as his level rose to 26, marking his growth as a warrior and his readiness for the new challenges that awaited him in the future. Kim's attention was drawn to a helicopter flying directly over the forest, which could indicate the presence of search and rescue operations or police activity. Seeing the helicopter, Kim realized that their actions might have attracted too much attention, preferring to avoid an encounter with the police and decided to retreat. However, the administrator who appeared behind him prevented him from doing so, starting a dialogue and asking about his level. Kim replied that his level was 26, noting that the administrator had a habit of asking unexpected questions. The administrator activated the pause effect, her wings shaking with excitement, indicating her nervous state. She reported that the pause effect had been activated by the Libra woman, and that she had received messages from other guardians asking her to check certain suggestions. When Kim opened the offer window, there were so many they could hardly be counted. Among the messages were offers from the Lion King, who unexpectedly began to like Kim, as well as offers from a Libra woman. Among the weapons appeared were rare weapons that had once belonged to Typhoon Joseon, including the Aiton Sword, an artifact that accelerated growth but could change inclinations towards evil, and a devil fruit that was also on the list of offerings. The presence of such items made it possible for any player to become a ranker. The last of the important offers was to train with the Heavenly Demonic Mountain Master, an offer that Kim never expected to receive, realizing the immense value of such a chance. The unidentified observer, closely following the events, did not make any concrete suggestions to Kim. He appreciated the hero's seriousness and composure, deciding to watch and wait for Kim to reach level 30 in order to influence his choices in the future. Now it became clear why the administrator was so nervous. The other guards also wanted to make their suggestions to Kim. It was her duty to inform the guards about Kim's attainment of level 25, because as he approached level 30, they would want to make a contract with him. She found herself under a barrage of messages from other guardians who felt she should have informed them sooner. Now, no explanation about the non-interference of the administrators in the game seemed like a sufficient excuse. Kim addressed the administrator with his reaction to the situation, 
he expressed an understanding of the general picture. But the administrator replied that she did not quite understand what he was talking about. Kim reminded her that her job could be in jeopardy if she angered all the guards with her actions. She, in response, bemusedly asked Kim about his true identity, expressing her surprise at his actions. Kim replied that he wanted 3,000 coins for his services. Although the administrator tried to haggle a bit, she quickly gave in to his demand as she was in no position to negotiate and agreed to his terms. After disabling the pause effect, Kim decided to act decisively. He extended his hand to the administrator, ready to sign the contract, demonstrating his readiness for new commitments. The scene shifted to the moment when Kim and the girl got into a taxi, ready to continue their journey together. At this time, Kim received a call from Yan So, who decided to contact him. Picking up the phone, Kim heard from Yan Su that she heard about him from the news about a man who defeated a monster on Mount Inwansan. He interrupted her by expressing his desire to thank her for her help, because without her, his mother would be in a much worse situation right now, as she was in the hospital on a drip. Kim noted that thanks to her help, he will never forget this act, expressing deep gratitude. He also added that he had planned to call her anyway because he had one more question for her. At the end of the conversation, Kim announced that in a few days he plans to leave for a distant city, hinting at a new goal or task in his future adventures. They gathered at the table where Kim decided to tell his plan. He said that he was leaving for Japan tomorrow, not for an ordinary trip, but for a raid. He also suggested clearing the portals that will appear in Osaka. Countries around the world have begun to prepare for training and gate opening after the events in Korea, but the preparation will not be able to protect people from the sudden gate with casualties ranging from hundreds to thousands. He laid out the plan and noted that the group could opt out because the trip was not for fun. Kim agreed to pay all expenses and tickets, so the others just need to take their passports, clothes, and come to the airport tomorrow. Then he was asked where he got the information from. He did not invent. He simply stated that he had prophetic dreams, through which he could learn about certain events. He often kept this information secret. Kim was knowledgeable and ready to go in any situation, even on his own and whether to believe him was already decided by others. She mentioned that she would miss class because of it, but agreed, on the condition that it was a date. Iron Fist declared that he is ready to follow the Hionic wherever he needs to go, because he feels gratitude for the saved life, and because of this he wants to help. Song Hua happily expressed her desire to go, noting that she had never flown on an airplane before. The King of Fists, the Empress of the Sword, and a tank that has great potential make a powerful team among newcomers. Tomorrow they will go to Osaka. There were no problems during the flight, but the only difficulty for Kim was not knowing the exact time the gate would appear. It was only known that shortly before that survival training began in Tokyo, where the success rate was about 33%. Later, gates with weak monsters appeared, but sometimes there were very strong ones, which became an exception to the rules. Judging by the fact that the opening of the portals resulted in more casualties, there may have been an event during the training where people were not ready, or some unforeseen exceptional situation occurred. Kim needs to get to Osaka to see for himself, and plans to spend about a week there looking for information. His family really liked the house he bought. Therefore you can leave even for a long period. His family thought it was suspicious because she always reacts like this. Of course at first they were not delighted, but deep down they were very pleased. They ended up on the streets of Japan. The Japanese mood was felt thanks to the blossoming cherry blossoms around. In the center of Osaka appeared a gate leading to Kim's past life, which had not been cleaned. This caused a rift through which the monsters were released. A portal appeared, from which Senya came out. She hastened to inform that at the moment no one has noticed them. They are known only to them. If they don't want to attract attention, then it's better not to show the video where they caught her. She asked Kim why he came to Japan, to which he replied that he was on vacation. The administrator suspected that people had gathered not just to relax, but had another goal. The law prohibits the release of information that could affect the game so the administrator could not answer Kim's question about whether events related to the players would happen. Sometimes guardians express their intentions through quests. Many guardians have requested such quests, some of whom prefer to remain anonymous. Senius creates a quest at their will. It was a personal journey, but the quest forced Kim and his team to act differently. This quest should have been completed before returning to Korea. Ksenia understood that Kim, who seemed cautious, was actually trying to get the maximum benefit and even use the guardians for this which was difficult for her to accept. Kim should also consider which fire he dares to play with. Kim and his team were looking for a place to have lunch. They were about to enter the cafe, but screams were heard from inside and panicked patrons ran outside. They found the turtle's nest quest they were looking for, 